There you go. That's uh, that. That was borderline smoother than our usual crashing. Normally, it's <laughs> in the middle of a conversation. And it's like, oh, we're live, are we? Oh, okay, my bad, sorry. Well, you just come in halfway through the conversation. Yeah, usually. Okay. But that's um, all scripted. I mean, this is on purpose. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do we just we get out of the way to start with? This is our Trump podcast. Yeah, and that but you're this wearing is ironically. It's not. I'm wearing this ironically. He wore this on the bus on the way here. I've he come did, as uh, a fascist. He's come <laughs> as a fascist. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the thing. Does everyone? It, does that automatically? If you if you support Trump, are you a fascist? No, but I like the idea of what was said that uh, not all Trump supporters are racist, but all racist supporters are uh, all racists are Trump supporters. So I think that works. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm not accusing. Oh, bloody hell, that door's open. Oh, okay. Um, Close yes. that door. <laughs> Shut that door. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, for the people listening, uh, we're not American. Door not opening. English. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, a door open. Do you know what? I, I, I love we describe a... things that happen <laughs> and people. The door can't is see opening them. in the corner. I did notice actually on the on the turn this down. I did notice on some watching some of the podcast back. You were right to pick up on the fact that I do talk like. That Do everyone can see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you get nothing. Oh, thank God for that. That he does. So, yes, a door just opened and that led on to that little conversational yeah. piece. Um, but, yeah, for people, again, who can't see, uh, Theo is wearing a delightful red. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Mega, <laughs> you know, make America great again. Cat MAGA? And accessory. Yeah, I always thought it'd be MAGA, but MAGA it's is what they say. I, I always no, they say it MAGA. 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 Is it MAGA? Yeah, I, thought, MAGA. I thought it was MAGA. No, it's MAGA. Maybe I got it the wrong way around then. MAGA's too posh. Ma- MAGA's Maga. like a, some, a posh person yeah. saying MAGA. Well, actually, yeah. it's MAGA. <laughs> it's the English yeah. version. Yeah. Yeah. MAGA. So, yeah, I'm fashioning a nice t shirt and accessory hat. Yeah, you're playing fast and loose. I've got a skinhead nice. underneath, so that sort of goes with the. Uh... Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, but skinheads. Have hair, don't they? You don't have, as in you. You've gone for full clean shaven, whereas I was a lot of skinheads would be. It's like a buzz cut, isn't it? I don't think it means. I think it's just a, a term. Just yeah. means anything that's. Yeah, but anyway. what do you mean? What they mean? Talking to Baldy. No, that's so. <laughs> <laughs> He's not bald though. That's the thing. It's just it's a weird bouffon. One other thing, I will forget this. But we're talking about Trump talking again. about Trump's hair, and we will get to start this. <laughs> we're talking about Trump's hair. Yeah. Um, the did you the Scottish it's documentary? So ridiculous. Trying to take you seriously with. That. Shall I, what, if I lose the cat, no, 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 <laughs> carry on, carry on. <laughs> it, it is slightly distracting. But now I know he's <laughs> laughing at me, so that's the thing. Um, but if you watch the documentary about Trump, you've been trumped. Where the Scotland, yeah. when you build the, the woman oh, yeah. says in it, because um, one of my notes was like, uh, I know made, made by someone who um, uh, ended up using uh, film funds and things to commit fraud. Oh, really? Ironically. Yeah. So the um, the I forgot his name actually. I went to um, it was, it's funny. I went to a workshop run by him, and he was talking about this and that. But he and his did you have um, to get five other people to join after? No, 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 no. <laughs> it wasn't, yeah, yeah. But it was um, uh, it was interesting. He, you know, he was talking about how you make these sort of guerrilla kind of documentaries okay. and how you can get people to invest in your films. But then he and his producing partner they did all these films. You know, saying it's quite interesting talking about Trump. They did um, uh, about the tabloids and all these things. You know. All this finger pointing, all this moral high ground, and then they committed fraud themselves. What was the fraud? Some um, so they basically, yeah, they were just defrauding film funds. Oh, right. And, right, uh, okay. and taking advantage of tax and it things. Wasn't the that, that's not that. Is but that, is that a crime? Yeah. I mean, defrauding. No, but, but as in they weren't using it for. There were Making other frauds film. they committed for um, as well. But, you know, saying we want this yeah. much money and they didn't need anything like that much. Oh. But so isn't, that just, filmmaking, yeah. isn't that just isn't that just kickstart? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> isn't that just like like Patreon? Patreon yeah, 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 that's I mean, your uh, Kickstarter campaign that, uh, torpedoed yeah. immediately. Um, so Sorry, yeah, no, on yeah. on that program, she said that one of the women says because I noticed <clears> that <throat> when he was outside, he'd wear a cap. Mm. Yeah, and so would everybody else to sort of, and I, it was only in windy places he'd do it. Yeah, and I thought, oh, he's trying to hold his hair down. Yeah. And uh, on this program that the the that you've been Trump talking about, which is uh, about the the this uh, opening up a golf course in Scotland and what terrible things were going on to the locals yeah. while um they were building it because some of them didn't want to sell up and they were just being hassled, and one of them said, "Oh my God, he was out there the other day and his hair blew." And it went to about eight feet. She said it was long. It all came off and went long. And she said, like if Bobby I, Charlton. She said, I, was like, I wish I had, <laughs> I had a camera because I could have sold that for a million. But I thought, oh, so well, he's got some sort of weave going on. Well, then it's held in it's place. Got, yeah, like a comb. Well, it's a bit like comb over, isn't it? I mean, and that's why he has the hat to keep yeah, it Yeah, to keep it. But he makes everyone else, the bodyguards all got the hat on. He goes, just so he doesn't look bad. Yeah, he doesn't look like but it's head, only windy yeah. places. It's like on the lawn, the White House lawn. That's one of the reasons. I swear that's the reason he didn't go to the. Um, there was the war. I think it was the First World War recently. Uh, thing recently yeah. in France, and he snubbed that. And he said that he had a big falling out with uh, President Macron. Yeah. Macron. Um, 
And I swear it's because it was a rainy couldn't day. Wear a cap. It was a rainy day, yeah. and it would have been. Um, it was uncovered, and he probably couldn't have had an umbrella. Yeah. And he didn't want his hair to get wet. Yeah. And go all see through. And the, the, he's um, see through. <laughs> his because if you look at the video early footage, like when he's not really that bothered about it, you can see the hair has been all messed up. But you can see underneath, like there's a hair missing underneath. Um, but the oh, well, man is seventy. Three, seventy-two, seventy-three. What's that? I mean, a years. Yeah, that's, that's how old he is. It's his bouncy. His dad was bald. In. I mean, his dad. Have you seen a more evil-looking bloke? Like in any <laughs> photograph, he looks like he's got that sort of look where he could stick a Nazi hat on him and go, "Yeah, that works." I like, wasn't going to go quite that far. I was going to say definitely like a Bond villain. I was going to say he no, looks he like looks... a he looks like a villain in a Laurel and Hardy strip. Like, <laughs> that's exactly he looks like, just yeah. like oh, just car- car- oh. cartoonishly yeah. evil, jumping up down the spot with like a nightcap. Scooby Doo, yeah. but even yeah. at his best, because I didn't see any moody photograph of him at his best, smiling into camera, he looked evil. <laughs> Yeah, I like yeah. the I like the, the the sort of classic uh, difference in extremity. You know, you and I are saying Lauren and Hardy or Scooby Doo. I went straight the old to go straight to uh, <laughs> straight to Nazi cab. But he, that, he's got that look to him, right? So anyway, so the um, podcast. Yeah. Um, so I've made a lot of notes, and I wanted to do this in sort of chronolo- uh, chronological order. So um, so he was born in uh, uh, June nineteen forty six. Uh, in the Jamaica Hospital in New York. So he's got an older sister, and for um, uh, people that are listening, I'm not reading this off paperwork. Definitely. For people are. that are watching, <laughs> that, that was a wink. That wasn't a wink. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely wasn't a wink. It was, it was, a, it was more so a, a wink sound effect. Yeah. Right, so he had an older sister, Mary Ann Trump, who was a judge at the uh, US Court of Appeals. He had an older brother, Frederick an airline pilot who died of alcoholism mm-hmm. uh, at 43, and a father, Fred Trump, who was the property mogul. Um, talk, well, actually, you, you, talking of his dad, so, I mean, we're going to get into lies eventually, but this is basically like the first half of his life sort of thing. But um, the recent one about saying his dad was born in Germany. Uh, no, that's, uh, no, all his, all his parents were born in, the information I had, though, was uh, all his parents, uh, sorry, both his, his mom's parents. Scottish. Yeah, but all, yeah. they were all born in Europe. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, no, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, sorry. All his, grand, all his grandparents and his mother were born in Europe, but his father was born in yeah. England. Yeah. His father yeah. was quite a bit older. Yeah, so in a New York meeting, in, uh, 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 New York meeting, in a NATO meeting at the White House, he was talking about Angela Merkel, and he said, um, I've got great respect for Angela Merkel in Germany. My father is, ge- quote, my father is German, was German, and was, hang on, was German, and was born in a very wonderful place in Germany, end quote. But and is that, is that not true then? No, he was born no. in 1905 in the Bronx. Oh, okay. So, uh, I don't know. That, is that mental health? Is that just... Did he just get muddled? Unless it is, like, he's a pathological liar. And I don't say that to be funny. It's where there's no point. He's not, there's nothing he's trying to gain. A pathological lie lies though, when it's not needed. He, did, he, met, he misspoke. He meant his grandfather, maybe? But we're doing that thing of get the, if you add it on to everything yeah, yeah, else, course, yeah, yeah, yeah. You then can always, he you just can make an excuse. I think it, it's yeah. a pathological liar. I don't have any difference between whether something I just lie because it's the first thing that comes to my head. Mm. This is something I wanted to discuss because actually reading a bit about his early life um, and seeing uh, uh, there's lots of interviews. Seeing those interviews of him in the eighties and nineties where he's coherent, where he's um, Sorry, reasonably like art- reasonably on. articulate. He seems just like kind of so, like kind of some normal business we'll just turn off the scumbag right? dude. You know what I mean? Mm. And there just seems to be a real jump. Like, at some point in the 90s, something happened to him. Yeah. <laughs> or something, or, or he changed, or he made the decision to act weird. But there seems to be a big jump between this guy who was being interviewed on MSNBC and, you know, CNN, and who seemed reasonable, who was, like, quite quiet and quite hardworking. I'm a businessman, I buy, I'm a real estate scumbag, whatever. And then this guy who is just... The, this bizarre lying buffoon that we have yeah. as, as a president. And there seems to be <coughs> such a, a huge jump, a, a huge change in, in this Well, person. I think it was always there. And what happened, it just got released through the media eyes on him. Because mm. people that met him before and when he just started to do um, interviews and things like that, he came across as quite nice. But it was when the, the businesses weren't going well, he was grabbing at straws and things. Um, then the media came in at the same time. He realised the brand was him 
bullshitting and licensing things. Yeah, I, I, I think, because I was sort of looking at the, the chrono chronological, the timeline of it all, and I was thinking that it's, it seems to be about... Sorry, one second. Can you close that door? We're going to have to yeah, close that door have, uh, with some noise in the background. So and, Andrew's uh, volunteered. I'm stepping away from the microphone for okay. a moment. Sorry, go on, Charles. But yeah, no, we, the, it seems to be around the time of The Apprentice, and it's the time when he created this... Um, oh, that's when it went into steroid mode, yeah. Uh, persona. This large and life thing, and then it's just kind of snowballed. He's been, as, as I say, he's been rewarded um, for for failure, for, but he's been rewarded for bad behaviour. You know, well, I think that's since. when he realised he comes sort of sapient to the no knowledge of oh my bullshitting works. Mm. Because one of the guys um, I was watching an interview said, uh, no, that was in the autobiography I was listening to. Said um, when he got the apprentice, obviously it was a low level thing. Basically, the phones had stopped ringing for him. He was he, he couldn't get investments anymore. He'd become a joke at that point. He, yeah. So then he realised, with the apprentice and things, oh, you can pretend to be this person, and it worked, which then made him go, oh, it fed into his proclivity of wanting to be full of shit. That's the same for it. Alan Sugar, isn't it? Had, had, haven't we all forgotten who Alan Sugar was before he did The Apprentice? What was it, Amstrad? Yeah, exactly. It was like the guy who makes the um, skyboxes. Yeah. And those and those and he even a couple of years ago he was trying to sell CD players like he come yeah. with a new CD player and I'm like dude like, oh, I saw that a quote. Sale. I think that's uh, yeah this is I saw and some with VHS attached to it I think come on mate I, I saw some quotes in the book about people that got things really wrong and Alan Sugar was in there he was talking about the the um, iPhone iPhone stores or something and he said something like. It's a load of rubbish. It'll be dead in 12 months. <laughs> like it's a fad. It's yeah, a fad. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Right. So anyway, let's get on with it. So um, <laughs> he was sent to a, a New York military academy. Um, <laughs> so this is one of the places where... Well, that was, was that punishment? That's why I heard he, he yeah. basically they kept wandering off. He wasn't very well respected by his dad. I think that's something that's gone throughout his life. This thing of needing to prove, prove, prove I'm not good enough. He calls people babies, things like that. He hates that sort of thing. I think he, he's... He was basically bailed out all his life by his dad up until when his dad died. He'd been constantly bailing him out. Mm. Um, but it is one of those military academy. You never want to be a soldier. It's one of those, we need to clean you up. Right. Go and sort yourself out because you're not doing anything of use. Now, bearing in mind, his brother went on to be a pilot. His, uh, his, the other sister, old sister. She's a judge, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she's a judge yeah. in federal court. So they both did well, even though obviously the, the, the brother died of alcoholism. Um, and he was the only one that was being bailed out at the time. So he's... A failure. So the others near. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm assuming the judge, um, n not obviously, but the the brother pilot before he passed away didn't have. I think he was had a role in the company, okay. but it was a very loose thing. He was an airline pilot. That was his thing. Um, it's so social, that isn't it? Sorry, I can sort of see the sister going off to be a judge. Well, I think the brother going off to be a. They pilot were just trained to be successful, in their and he right probably thought, "I'll take the easy option, Daddy Company," which is if you've ever worked for somebody. Who's Dad owns the company. Yeah. It's it, there are certain type of people generally, and if your proclivity is there to be that sort of way, it just heightens it that you're and you're going to keep failing because you're going to grab. And it is short. he the youngest? Child He's the youngest. Yeah, okay. it, it's not usually the successful uh, child who goes <laughs> on to work work <laughs> yeah. in the family business. It, not always. It, sometimes, but you know what I mean. It, it usually. Hey, we were talking about skill. the Godfather earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, he went to this. So this is one of the places where he's tried to get his grades back. So um, the uh, the head, I'm just going to read a quote. I'm not going to go into it too much. So uh, this is from the uh, New York Military Academy, and the headmaster Evan Jones uh, said this quote: uh, "The superintendent of the academy came to me in a panic because he had been accosted by prominent wealthy alumni of the school who were Trump's friends who wanted to keep his records uh, uh, secret." Um, so basically, they got into contact with him and said, like, we, we want the bloody things or we're going to sue you sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> this is another side point. He, later on, the school was uh, struggling, so it was going to close down. And they were seeking £30 million to like keep it open. So they got in contact with him. Yeah. You're going to say something? No, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm trying to think, what's it going to be? Right, so what was just the, low, what's just the punchline? Dummy. <clears throat> Right, so this school, Military Academy, he always talks about it. So um, seeking $30 million to save from closure. Now, Donald was approached for $7 million of it because they assumed okay. he was a billionaire from things that had been said in the Forbes list and all that sort of stuff. Trump said, what do I get out of it? They said, we'll give you a building. He said, that's a shit deal. You, I don't, I'm not giving you nothing. Bad right? deal. But Bad then deal. because it's Trump. we <laughs> deal. Yeah, you're not getting anything. Okay, billionaire. Right, you're not getting $7 million to save the school that you keep going on about. Then a few days later, they received a letter um, 
from uh, oh, it was a guy called Richard P- P- Pasulu. I forget. I might be getting his name wrong. I'm assuming I am. Who worked at the school? Um, he said I received an official letter from Michael Cohen. So Pelosi said, <laughs> having asked him for some charity money, um, quote, Cohen told us Trump would love to have the money to buy the school so he could bulldoze it. <laughs> End quote. That was a nice. Ask yeah, I've been, I've been the same there though. I've, I've worked at some place. I'm like, God, I want to so so buy this company and fire all of you. It's just another thing in his life where it didn't go well for him at school. Like he was not um, liked. Yeah, I can't. I don't. Why know. Why would you say? Right, get, get your lawyer to send a letter in to say, yeah, because you I'll can. The money so it, I can it's very childish, it. isn't it? It's, very it's beyond it's spiteful. Like yeah. that means I hate that place, and yeah. this is my opportunity to mention the fact that I, how much I hated it. Um, but I mean, as an ad, but I mean, as a man in his whatever forties or fifties, if you're still holding resentments of like well, that's bloody a school, and bloody child teeth, is what you know you're what talking I mean? about. Yeah, I, I just think, God, you know. Um, so he, but he transferred from um, Fordham Uni. He went on to do that, that which was ranked sixty sixth out of all the universities. That's the one he got into. Mm-hmm. Um, to Wharton School of Finance, which is one of the Ivy League schools. After a meeting with um, the admissions officer, who uh, happened to be a classmate of his older brother. That's an, and he jumped into Wharton's School of Finance. And he came out, he's, I think he says an MBA, but he, did, he got an undergraduate degree from there. So that... Because that's what got him his first couple of exceptions, wasn't it, for the draft? Because he was in college. Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> and then it was the Spurs. Before, before the yeah, fall arches. Before something up to his feet. And, um, <clears throat> uh, so where are we now? So, um, so uh, yeah, so up to that point, you're basically looking at somebody that's just plodding along, not doing much. I mean, if you're going to be a judge, like this, that, that means they've gone on to do stuff they wanted to do and they've taken it seriously and they've achieved Yeah, that things. seems like someone You can't pay your way in to that yeah. sort of thing. It's usually something you, you have to pay, decide yeah. when you're young, you know what I mean? When you're like 12, 13, I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to be a... Yeah. Something, yeah, I mean, something it, impressive. Or you know I'm going to bounce around from my dad's businesses and sort of try and figure things out and... Uh, and have them not work out. So I was thinking up to the age of 20, he's basically done sod all apart from live off his dad's money. Um, <clears throat> actually, I did have some information about that, which was, the, so the, what was the New York Times investigation that came out and um, that, which then said, no, that thing of him having a million pounds and going off to New York is bollocks. He basically was given over the years 413, at least, they say, 413. In today's money, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, in the equivalent of today's money. 413 million pounds. Um, so what did we have? Uh, but it's mainly in tax dodging, or like we were talking about before the podcast, having six different jobs from lawn manager of the laundry to accountant for this. Like he had so many jobs just as a way of funneling money to his son. Um, oh, he's me coughing away. He also had three trust funds from his dad so not just the the one there didn't work three three is it so he's even greedy for trust funds yeah, yeah. but he, i mean he he <laughs> he went through these in a later business to get money from the because they went he lost those and then he tried to get more money from inheritance from when his dad's dead but what did he lose his money on was it bad it was just from what it looks like he was just spending money all over the place he was living the life of thinking he was a trump i'm assuming there was some low level stuff that he was trying to because this is early days this isn't even like the failed trump businesses now okay this is him just doing nothing like buying cars or yeah i mean you would suppose there would i'm guaranteed i'm assuming there was he probably tried to do a bit of this and a bit of that and property and it just was not working because what he does he gets money and then he spends it pretending to be something and doesn't focus on the thing that he was supposed to be doing, and then it falls flat. And I'm assuming his background up to the age of 25 was littered in these sort of things. But she was giving you three trust funds. Um, so the New York Times found that at the age of three, so his dad's constantly funneling money into his trusts and things like that, he was the earning the equivalent of $200,000 a year, again, in equivalent money. At age three. At age three. Bad deal, bad deal. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of playing a bit By the that. age of eight, he was technically a millionaire. Right. Again, from the money that didn't come to him. Um, when he did leave college, his father, what they found, was giving him the equivalent of a million pound a year pocket money, like giving him, like just actually giving him the money when he left college. That vanished. Um, and that went into his 20s and 30s. He's still getting the millions of the, a year. So far, so good. This is all just normal yeah. stuff, really. Yeah. This is normal, average typical. Joe, but even yeah, in the f- his forties and fifties, his dad was giving him around five million pound a year. He went up to five million. This is in your forties and fifties. Like you, no, um, no one wants to kind of forsake their children, broadly speaking. 
So wouldn't you say, right, this is the last time I cut you a check of five no, million yeah. quid and you're on your own now? But yeah, the just, thing is, you're talking it, but, about 20 and 30 pounds if to a normal fat person. Do you know what I mean? If you're worth hundreds of millions, yeah. in equivalent terms of trying to get your son to do anything and him bullshitting you all the time, it's like, yeah, here's another, here's another, because what else am I going to do with you? Um, and yes, yeah, so that's parental love must have been in there. So just trying to oh, yeah. manage an idiot, like maybe something or he, you know, and just constant excuses about why I haven't got this and why I haven't got that and what I need and what I need. And it just snowballs. And as a rich parent, they tend to do that thing of just giving money every year to look after yourself. That's what a trust fund kid is. Yeah. You know, here's some money. But they're used to paying a million pound a year to somebody that's usually it's like 10, 20, 30 grand a month in America. Like if you go to um, sort of Aspen and those places, those people are getting 20 and they're not doing anything. They work in shops and things, but they trust funds and all that. It's quite normal. But if you're a big mogul property guy, then it's, you know, it's your parent giving you 50 quid. I just don't know. Yeah. Like if you were 40 and 50, I mean, obviously, yeah. yeah 40 and 50, still getting that's up a little to 5 bit, million. Yeah. But even if you, you know, just saying, oh, mum, dad, can I have that? Fair enough if you've got into real financial, you know, the bailiffs are at the door kind of thing. But just to I think what? he just got used to it. I think he yeah. just got used to it. Um, so, yes, yeah, so because remember, up to his 30s, he's still bullshitting. Like he's not really done anything. He's got oh, has he stopped the bullshitting now? <laughs> yeah, good I think we're at peak. Hopefully, yeah, we're yeah. at peak bullshit oh, you now. Never I know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the, 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 it looks like he was given from the, the accounts of the um, the New York Times. It was which is, went four hundred and thirteen million at least. They say that's a lot of money, isn't it? On yeah, top, that's like not. that's and you still basically had nothing when he got to his forties and the businesses because all his when whenever he'd quote money, which was always a lie. It was almost anything that, like when he, um, where did I have the information? The it's also the difference between what you have and what you're worth, isn't it? Well, they, they, even what he, so you, you, you would immediately put, say, how much debt are you in? And he would never talk about it. But const he's constantly been in debt all his life. Because what was happening is, he <laughs> never had, we all? No, but yeah. he never had, n anything he did and lost was never his money. He was always borrowed money. Okay. So he's, it's an illusion of him paying, but he never paid for anything. Everyone up until right, like, is always paid around him. So he was the person that didn't lose out. Well, uh, this is very much, this seems to be, uh, there's a very much a history of this, is that he, he will borrow against things that... Well, he borrows against his name, his dad's name. It, That's it, what he's borrowing. Yeah, against. and a lot of things he d d maybe doesn't own as well. <laughs> like there's a lot of properties and there's a lot of uh, enterprises, a lot of businesses which he is associated with, which he has his name on, or he's on the board. And this is one of the reasons why he's not. He's so uh, he's put a court injunction now to stop them um, releasing his bank details. Yeah. Because the whole thing is a house of cards. Yeah. You know? And it's you're, all I think on. he's not even scared that he's not a billionaire. But I think that they will look at these some of the deals and the finance things, and they will go, actually, these are. An easy bit dodgy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you don't, you've been putting things up as collateral that you don't necessarily have That's the right, right yeah. to do so because you don't own these things. But well, is he associated with them? Is it, you know, because I think, isn't it the, the big Trump Chicago uh, thing isn't his at all? Uh, there's, there's many things. Well, he's got his name on 17 buildings yeah. in, and he actually owns five, I think. Yeah. And he's got some in Japan That's and awful. things. But they came to him. Yeah. And, Can we use your name? To, and then he just carried on the bullshit of, look what I've got. You go, well, it's not yours. The, everything inside the building isn't yours. It's all licensed yeah. properties. Um, but if they're going to keep giving him the, you know, they keep saying. Well, it's a con. I mean, I've I said this before off the podcast, but um, from all the people I've looked back in history over the people, to, more to be, to get to inspired by people and find out a lot of people are charlatans and full of shit. He's the biggest. I say it again, not the best. Um, like somebody said to me, well, what about the presidency thing? You go, no, no, you don't understand. Everything's built on a con. So he's never actually done anything. And he's what I'd call like a bottom feeder. He comes in at the low level of everything. Like he couldn't have gone and go Barack Obama. His, op his any brains he has is seeing people at their weakest and exploiting that. It's never achieving over something. It's always saying, that's about to crack. Let me run in. Even with the New York, you know, he came in when New York was in the shit. I mean, they talk about New York was going to go bankrupt. The city was yeah. going to go bankrupt. They had police issues. Police weren't getting paid. The crime rate had just gone... It's so baffling mental. that a city can go back and you think... Well, well, it's, it starts well, with low-level corruption. We're a country. We're yeah, yeah, bankrupt, yeah. So, I mean... And the, the New York politics, I mean, back in the 70s, you know, everyone's got their hand in the till. Things aren't being paid. Bins aren't being collected. Then you throw in, like, the mafia and the, the litter not being collected and all these sort of... What was it? The 3% the, uh, thing? What was that? Um, that was the thing. 
thing whereby it was a consortium of all the five mafia families. Any any property deal or any building deal over two million dollars would automatically go to a mafia run one mafia <laughs> run um, uh, building firm. And they uh, and this is all this is all documented because they had a couple of informants, uh, a couple of okay. to witness, and a couple of informants. Loads of people went to prison. People got killed over this. So like this is this is all documented, all, all court things. And like yeah, they, they were literally uh, doing it. They were running all the construction pretty much in, seven, in late seventies and eighties. Um, and this also coincides when Trump was um, making his mark and uh, well, maybe he's a uh, ma- you know he is he is. A Donald Trump could be Don Trump. Yeah, um, the, the Don. Mm-hmm. Well, he was the, the Don. Yeah, I think that was foreseeing a few. The Donald. Casino Don. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but but basically, he's like even with the the politics. You go. What did what did he achieve? He came in at a time of coming out of the Apprentice reality. We had reached that level, uh, Nadir, in, as a society. He was, ran against. He saw a woman that was the most disliked woman in American history politics, and thought. Let me slip in here. Even at the time, not knowing he was actually going to run, he just thought it's a brand because I'm my brandish fuck all now. Well, because he ran a couple, he, he sort of muted about running a couple of times, hadn't he? Yeah, he, yeah. But then he saw a, a chance where, oh, hang on, people like me. Let me talk more shit. Oh, they like me talking shit. Let, and that's when it spiraled. Well, that's why we got it running against the Republicans. You looked at mm-hmm. it and then it became like, oh, we're pinning all our hopes on Ted Cruz. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> no. He was a Democrat. And then he switched sides. Yeah, well, he, he was a Democrat up till I think it was 89. Oh, then no. he joined the Reform Party very briefly. Um, and then he went to Republicans, then back to Democrats. Then and then he was an independent for a little bit. And very briefly, up until the Republican, yeah, until uh, he, got, uh, yeah. he joined the race. As it but the same, I mean, Bernie Sanders, is an ind- although we think of him as a Democrat, he's an independent, but he goes on the Democratic ticket. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so um, but yeah, thing. so basically, like, so the New York, what happened, they were basically on their last legs. Yeah. And he came in with a deal with other people's money, said, look, give me this, I'm not paying any taxes for God knows how many years, it's that or nothing. And they went, all right, there you go. And everyone was pissed off and they, they, was, they were being sued for doing it and all that sort of stuff. The politicians were pissed off. But that was throughout his life. He just looks... Do you know what he reminds me of, funny enough? I'm well, he's an opportunist even... then, isn't he? Yeah, but it's worse than that. It's, like that wor- it's almost that pimp mentality where I find somebody at their la- lowest point, grab them get them off the street and then pretend I'm the man. Well, what did you do? You took somebody that was living I'm off the street. I'm just thinking of him like, in like a big pimp. F- um, f- I knew he was going to make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I just said uh, like... A big, the, yeah, yeah, driving around a gold Cadillac. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Bitch, are you for like, real? Yeah. Walk with a cane. Um, yeah. But that's what he does. So his thing is seeing people at their lowest and not caring about exploiting it. That's basically his thing. Um, so, yeah, so uh, he went on to... Now, just getting into his businesses. So, you forget, right? So, he's... Talking about an apprentice, right? The two books he wrote, I can't remember the names. Art of, them of now. the Deal, I can't remember. And something of the deal after was coming back from the Deal of the Dark, Art of the Deal. So they were ghost written. Dark side he, of the deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the rise making of a deal deal. with the devil. <laughs> like, it went on the yeah. yeah. How to rip the devil off. Yeah, yeah. yeah just um, what a picture on, on the cover of just him and Satan. Shaking <laughs> hands, like, smiling, yeah. yeah. Were well, they breaking ground on the new side? Forward <laughs> by dark angels. Yeah. Forward by Mephisto, yeah. yeah. The yeah. demon. <laughs> Yeah, what's the um, Pazuzu? <laughs> <laughs> the Exorcist. The Zuzu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so Your mother makes deals in hell. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that, that is, uh, Exorcist 2 has one of the best theme songs. Like, I, oh, have, I can't remember that. Oh, I'm not even going to do it, but it's so funky in 70s. It's <laughs> genius. So out of place with such a surreal film as well. Yeah, right, so anyway, he's, he's been right. bankrupted six times, okay? So whatever... Not, think, pa- not personally, though. It's only um, it's always his businesses. It's yeah. Well, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, yeah. he's never been. Yeah. So th- these are the six bankruptcies. The, the Taj Mahal, the Trump Castle Hotel and Casino, the mm-hmm. Trump Plaza Casino, Trump Plaza Hotel, Trump Hotel Casino Resort, Trump Entertainment Records. That was in 2009. They always seem like a weird mismatch of like, it's like, the Trump Casino Resort, the Trump Resort Casino, the Trump. Yeah, like it's the three letters, <laughs> three words. He's just desperately just trying to get it right, isn't he? He's just, he's just trying to get the casino and the hotel work. Casino Trump. Resort. This will be the one. Yeah. This will be the one that nails it. Talking about him being a businessman, somebody said to him, "He's the only man in America that can open a casino where the casino loses money." I, yeah, but yeah. I looked at that. Yeah, yeah. But I, how did you do it again and again? But I looked at that and I was like, "Ah, oh, isn't this going to be really?" But it was just because of the way he um, funneled the debt to build it and then couldn't pay it back. Basically, I was well, like, his oh, constant man. theme. Up to like the Taj Mahal, which was his big loss, where mm. people were saying this isn't going to make money. 
and you could, nobody would fund him. So he basically goes to a bit more shady things. I think I can't remember the name of how he funded it, but basically it was like going to a payday lender. It was like I'm making this, and I'm not going to think about how we're going to do it. I'm just going to get money from. Whatever. I suppose the problem is you look at that and you think, well, casinos make uh, you know a load of money. They never lose money. But it's like, yeah, but if you're only making, I think it's. For example, all roulette wheels make 3% over the course of a year profit. Um, I think it's that and blackjack makes slightly more. There's just some weird mathematical <laughs> thing that all roulette wheels. So, but that's not, if it's, uh, it, it was debted, I think the Taj um, was debted up to his eyeball. That's not a word, debted. No, but, but the, it, the it was problem with it, buyout, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was, it was the interest rate that yeah. killed him because yeah. I think it was like 14% interest yeah. rate when you should be getting a load of like 0.3. But he <clears> said, <throat> you can't do this. You're not going to make money on it. He thought, like he always done, I'm doing it, and whatever happens, it doesn't matter because I'll just walk off anyway. So why not just do it? And it makes me feel good. But the the guy in the documentary said they basically had to bring in a million pound a day to break even, and they said this to him, and somebody said to him, "Look, this isn't going to work." And how much and would he that was be against sort of say, for example, a Vegas, like a top Vegas? Oh yeah, I don't know how much, but he basically said, "Look, you, you're going to have to make more than." I mean, that seems like a lot. The, the guy yeah, said, happens, yeah. "No casino in the country makes that amount okay, of money." Fine, fine, right? Yeah, and but he, it's because and he already owned two on the strip on the same strip as well. The, oh. the, the Taj Mahal was his third casino, literally on the same road. Well, it was the yeah. biggest. It was supposed to be the biggest. Uh, but but people were like, uh, "You're sort of competing against <laughs> yourself, <laughs> <Yeah>. really, because <laughs> you already own." But it. again, there's no common sense with him, is it? It's just that's bigger I want the best like that's all it comes down to if you get business structure and I think a, why a lot of his like with the Taj failed the guy was saying half the um, the, the machines weren't working like when, when they opened they just like half of them weren't working he went on to say oh they blew up because they were being so overused just what a pure bullshit <laughs> But um, they literally says on the video, they said, no, they, they were so overused, they, they just blew up. Like, just I just love his, I mean, this is, this, is, this is not to say I love Donald Trump, but I love his, everything can be twisted, everything can yeah. be turned, everything I can make yeah. it. It was, you know, it was so used that yeah. it blew up. Yeah. And when actually not making enough work. money, we're making too much money. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it was like a double negative. We closed it. Really out. Out. We didn't have anywhere to put D the money. Didn't have anywhere to put the money, so yeah. we just stopped. Yeah. You know, it's I felt up. bad for the other people. <laughs> it, they felt bad, so we we closed it. But I think, like, because again, he's a con man, okay, yeah. and I think he's the biggest. And I think he doesn't. He, he's just on autopilot. He's not intelligent with it. He's just that's what he's figuring things out. But I think what he does is he he's so careless with actually running a business. He just wants the the notion of having that title open stuff and then if you were a ceo you'd be quite um you'd make sure the right people are in the right places with him it's just who do i like who puts up with my shit put them in charge which are usually idiots and i think that's I've probably why it's like that though to be fair i'm i'm i want that a lot of his businesses fail because all these casinos and hotels i think he just gets people in that he likes you know he goes with that gut instinct of his mm. and then just goes well right get on with it but you, you know, they're no good at the job. I mean, look at the what's who's the sec? Is it the press secretary? No, who's the the oh the FBI thing? The guy who just come kind of that said the report he was exonerated. Oh, like, what Muller? Muller. I mean, he just throws people into places and said, "Yeah, get on with it." Like, but you don't. You go, you've no process of interviewing, or they just do you like let like me go and do the job, and that's why all these businesses fail. Because if you own the business, you put people in place that run the business regardless of what you want to say. You'd like to think so, yeah. But uh, to, to be fair, someone else said this, but his Rolodex is getting quite thin nowadays. Because <laughs> well, now that, yeah. everyone's in like prison. Like his head, everyone's yeah, everyone's in prison. Or, or are currently under indictment. <laughs> and <laughs> and like, he's running out of people. This is why the family's taking such a big role now. Because but you see the pus are coming around, like somebody, the man, main man's sick, and you just see the pus, they get absorbed in, and you see, stop, like the Sarah Sanders thing, just... He finds people that were just, they're those type of, they're the people that will sell cigarettes. They're the people that will promote oil being burning. Yeah, it's like good. these, it's a cycle of these lobbyists, isn't it? Yeah. And they work for, they'll work for whoever and wherever. Yeah. And more so in America. And it's the go-to people. You always go to the same and It's people. like, oh, you know, no, um, we don't need renewable things. Like, you live on this planet too. Yeah. So when it's like, you know, when it's uninhabitable, <laughs> you're going to still have to live here. I know you're going to get paid a lot. You're probably getting paid a lot. But that's the thing I think is weird with these lobbyists. I can understand certain things, but when it's things like this planet you're making, these people that you're working for, that you're speaking for, that you're trying to do, they're making this planet uninhabitable. But that's what I'm saying. He, like, like attracts like. Yeah. And they don't really care about the effects, like him, of what happens afterwards. I just want to be that person. And not but he's got a young else. son. You think, don't you want Baron to not be living, you know? Having to stand on top of a no, skyscraper said, that's submerged in water. He's got to do it for himself, hasn't he? Fighting, yeah. fighting uh, everyone for the last t uh, tin of beef, corned beef. 
because that's all that's going to be left yeah. of the planet. You know, and it's just like, I, right. I, I think over a tank of gas. Yeah. Yeah, what exactly. you do, I think people still don't realize like how bad he is. Like, I think you impart even low level emotions onto him thinking, well, he, would he think this? Would he, he go, no, you really have to understand he's just hollow inside. He's not bothered about really family. Because I, I wonder, oh. I'm, I sort of think how much of this is an act and how much of this is the, the real thing and what does he what does what really does he really think and how much of it and what's scarier what's is it scarier that he believes some of the things he says even down to the simple even down to the simple bullshitty um you know oh they were playing the machines so much that's what broke them but this but is what i say what a pathological liar is it's somebody that lies regardless of whether it benefits him or not he just automatically I lies i always think it's fascinating though when you read because it's not just about whether, you know, you're just trying to puff yourself up and, but you, you, you see it from him when they talk to in, you know, you'll be having a conversation with someone and you go, and inside you're going, I know this is, all of this yeah. is a lie, but I'm nodding along and going, and it's like, yeah, it and, but I'm you. sure, but also it's like, I'm sure you must know, I know you're lying. No, but see, there you're doing it. You're yeah. imparting an emotion that they're lower level than yeah. that. It's they like, don't care. I know your dad didn't, uh, didn't whiff, lift heavy right. weights than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I, Why are you telling me that? Okay. He, uh, okay yeah. And no, I had this here the other day. I'm not going to go into the details, but I had this the other day. Oh, this this woman details. said. Okay, I was talking to a nurse. Um, yeah. uh, long story, got families, not very well. Yeah. I was talking to a nurse and she was saying some stuff. And I was like, uh huh, okay. And I was like, I'm not entirely sure that's right. Because she was saying that basically, if you lie down for more than an hour, an enzyme comes up and breaks down your muscles and you can't, like, <laughs> can't stand up. And I was like, <laughs> Your spidey sense. I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. I was just like, okay, yeah, uh huh, okay. Are you right. sure this was a nurse? And it wasn't just like you were on the children's ward with a skate mental patient with a uniform. Um, yeah, exactly. And like genuinely. And I was thinking, <laughs> I said this to my mum later. I was just like, I don't, none of that stuff was, because <laughs> was factory true. She's like, no, no, I didn't really understand anything. That isn't, yeah. Because she said, she, my mum was like, surely that means if you go to sleep, you couldn't sleep for more than about 20 minutes because like you'd just yeah. die. Perish. Yeah, you'd, you'd just, just be wake like up some puddle. desiccated. You'd be like a puddle yeah. or something. You know what I mean? But that's, that's, that's what I mean. But even, that that's somebody where you think they're trying to be f they want to feel like they're intelligent mm. or something when you're a pathological liar it doesn't matter whether it's beneficial or not i just say anything it's not a i'm just trying to trick you i'm not trying to make myself feel better yeah it's, it's not just, even it's not for like, benefit or gain sometimes. it could be you know like I mean? who uh who, who did you see the who um somebody who came to the podcast today i went um yeah there's some people there and andrew brought one of his friends and then you go why would he say that? No, yeah. like there's yeah. nothing to be. Oh, gained. I just saw Brad Pitt outside. Yeah, go, no, but see you, again, that's that's ego. If I said, oh, some beautiful women came in or whatever, but if I just said, oh yeah, Andrew's there, um, and uh, some women came, in, or uh, he brought his mate with him, you go, why did he lie about that? There's nothing to be gained there. That's a pathological lie because oh. the thought process isn't trying to gain anything. Yeah. It's just that's what they constantly do. You're just creating your own reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah like um, and but now you know if you get to forty, to 50, I understand if you're a kid and you yeah. don't have to grow up. But when you've just been, you've no, you have no responsibility. There's, there's no it, whether I say something it's a lie or it's not. I never have to um, uh, make up for anything because I just move on to the next thing. So it, it, it creates that brain where nothing that you know the synapses don't fire that way anymore. But um, what in what the only time he's had to. Um, produce anything about his financial records like legally was when he wanted to go to uh, open up the thing in the Atlantic uh, um, the casino at the Atlantic New York in New Jersey so he had to give in his taxes and about what he'd actually done it's the only time he's had to do it like oh. hand them all in um, so it's 1981 so he went to he had to get the, the license from the New Jersey Casino Control Committee so he had to hand everything in like, there's nowhere oh, around it was like it. a gaming license yeah thing. that's it okay, yeah right. <laughs> Think about the Godfather too. Yeah. Like, like the guy. Or Casino, Casino. Yeah, they Casino, had yeah. Their, yeah, their, their, their um, so uh, they found Trump was l worth less than five million dollars. Like, and I think at this point he's claiming to be a billionaire. So I'm worth less than five million dollars as well. Yeah, but you're not claiming <laughs> to be a billionaire. Um, five million dollars. Um, and by this time he'd already been reported in the Forbes that you know he's hundreds of millions or whatever billionaire. Um, but How do they bet? I'm oh, sorry, I'm just unwrapping cough sweet here. Yeah, I know. Just about do to it say. quickly. Just do, don't, don't try Can we just say you are unwell and I'm unwell? So if there's a lot of. Yeah, 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 yeah Charles. Why well, can't you be unwell as well? Yeah, because I've been through it. My uh -huh. mighty Wolverine um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. level of uh, um, <laughs> antibodies. Yeah, right, right, right. just. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's worth five minutes. Now, the, the, his biggest con, which I think really everything is built on this, was the problem with the Forbes. Now, 
He had is, a habit. Is it the Forbes? The Forbes. Ma- yeah, I just made that up. Um, the Forbes magazine, which brought out, I think it was the first time they did the Forbes rich list, <coughs> 400 most richest people. And they didn't, ch- he went phoned up as somebody else, like he did John Barron, John yeah, something. That's his yeah, weird, that's a couple yeah, of names. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Um, and he basically and his son's name Baron, which I think is oh a bit no. weird. Yeah, his son's not forgot. Yeah, yeah. a slightly different spelling. I think the fake John Baron is the fake John Baron as opposed to the real one. <laughs> but John Baron, that Baron is two R's, and I think his son is one. R, as so in, that's a, another know, the, little the sickness. You go. It's like a weird. Yeah. What's his Baron mm. word that you like? There's some. He read a book when he's young. Baron Trump. <laughs> yeah, some Von Baron yeah, something. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, <laughs> he's not peeling the layers back. It, it's, um, it's very aspirational. It's like um, yeah. sometimes you get like kind of uh, people from Africa called like prince yeah, or well, like yeah. king or something. Yeah, there's it's a lot of that. Yeah, as aspirational, yeah. Or doctor as a first name. You the know what I mean? The name. Doctor as a first, first name. Yeah, because they want their kids to have something aspirational, right, positive, yeah. and you know, so, so, so it's almost it's like, like that. psychosomatic. Yeah. Like, here's the what name. If you become an actual doctor, then you're doctor, 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 doctor. like major, major in yeah. Catch Twenty Two. Yeah, this is. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was major, major, major. <clears> actually, why was Doctor No called Doctor No? Because he was a medical doctor and he'd been to. Yeah, he was an actual doctor. Was he a registered uh, doctor? I, I'm assuming. I don't think he was a GP with but, his No, but hands, my point is the no. What's Dr. No? No is his last name. Yeah. Oh, right. So what was his first name? I don't know. Doctor. Julius, isn't it? Dr. Julius No, I thought it was. Oh, it's been a long no time. No was his first name. There's no reason for that. It seems a weird choice. of. It's just because it sounds cool. Oh, it's more the, the name of it, what it sounds like. Okay. Um, right, so we're up to you. So, um, That's yeah, for another so, podcast. So basically, he bullshitted the Forbes. The problem was... I just can't believe they didn't fact check it. This is the problem. Yeah. He slipped through the net and nobody checked. So, how did he do all his businesses afterwards? He didn't prove anything to anybody other than selling the fact I'm in the Forbes magazine. He would literally say, there's what I do. Mm. So, the thing all was all built on a mistake that they didn't actually check what he was worth. And then, because he was in the magazine, he then literally used the magazine to raise investment for companies because he was in there people thinking I, i'm assuming you have to be checked and vetted which you usually do um so it was everything about branding and licensing his name came after the forbes magazine so that little mistake was then his selling pamphlet it's quite gutsy well it's again he's just a he's a con man so his main purpose in life is conning constantly. So you could walk in. If this wasn't real life, this could be like quite a fun sort of caper film. I mean, I'm assuming yeah. it will be. But, but if so, he wasn't president, yeah. just quite <laughs> frankly, like if he was just some business person, if he was like, catch scumbag. me if you can, you know. Yeah, yeah. If he was just some business comeback, it'd be fine. <laughs> and it's only the fact that he's president, really, that, that all of a sudden these things become worthy of analysis, yeah. become worthy of dissection, really. Well, it's, it's like the draft, you know, the alleged, or well, draft hunting is an illegal term, but you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, he got these deferments because it, so do 15 odd other, other million people. I don't have a problem with dodging, dodging the draft. Like, to, like, re, like refusing yeah, to go to the Vietnam yeah, War. Yeah, I don't like, want to get shot at, so I'm like genuine, of, yeah. Like genuine, I'm not going to, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to go fight Vietnam, no way. Somebody said recently, on, it was on the radio, and they were saying about it's hard, because they were talking about Trump coming to celebrate something with the army, and it's, they, this guy basically said... Is there a D-Day commemoration? He up, said yeah. it's hard for this guy to turn up for us to sort of salute him, knowing that he's the sort of guy that our dad's fought against, <laughs> like everything he stands for. <laughs> it's, it's like really odd. Um, right, so at the time when he was, he, uh, they uh, valued him at $5 million, less than $5 million at the time, he was claiming to have $3.7 billion in a letter that he went, he phoned Forbes. It, it, and as what, John year Barron. Would, what year would this have been? I think so. It's in the early nineties. The casino so opened in nineteen seven. Is a huge ninety nine. Not like three point seven billion is an insignificant number now, but back in the nineties, that must have been. Mm. Yeah. So, or would that be in today's money? Who knows? I oh, I think everything's probably an equivalence. To oh, okay. Fair. So it, it might yeah, be. Right, yeah. Okay, fine, I'm fine. assuming they would. Yeah. Again, nothing to sniff at. No one. Goes, Ugh, just yeah. Three point seven. But, <laughs> but it's a quite. A big we <laughs> we do live in a world of trillionaires now. Um, yeah. So basically, that was because he phoned the the, the Forbes as John Barron and said. Trump's worth this, Trump's worth that. It got written down. Somebody picked that piece of paper up. Blah, blah, blah. It just slipped through the net. And then he used that magazine as proof to other people from all over the world. This is what I do. I'm not giving you nothing. Here's my name. Do you want it or not? So it was really just a... He just slipped in. He was just greasy. And it just worked. Mm-hmm. And then everything, all the licensing, the hotel, it was all built on this name thing. Um, yeah, so the... Uh, the Trump, uh, the, the the Taj Mahal, which is his uh, worst thing, was a uh, boss loss. Was the in nineteen ninety opened? It was all basically bought 
built on bullshit. People said to him, look, this is not going to work. It financially doesn't make any sense. This isn't going to work. And that's where, if you had somebody in charge that knew what they were doing, and he didn't. So it went that he sacked the people that told him, literally sacked them, the, um, uh, well, phoned their bosses to sack, get him sacked because they were saying, they actually put something out in the paper to say, look, this isn't going to work. It doesn't make any sense. That guy got sacked, they opened up, and then six years later, they went defunct. Now He put Ivana in charge, didn't he? Who? Ivana. His oh. oh, yeah. I mean, basically, she, yeah. they say when she I lost charge. her. I mean, she had a salary. Yeah. She was, you know. <laughs> but he, she was running things, really. Like, he, he, when he got rid of her, like, he'd lost out because she was running a lot of shit. Like, people admired her as the business mind in it. She's, um, yeah, I've got, a lot, yeah, I've got a lot of time. And I don't want to nice overskip the fact that when he was, um, they were coming up to the first payment um, for, the, uh, for the interest of the, the loans, um, a few days before, they weren't going to make the payment and it was going to default, which is a big deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, his dad, a man walked in, rather, into the casino um, and bought $3 million worth of chips. What do you think he did with it? Do you think he gambled with them on the blackjack? What, you what did he do? Just l- lose it immediately. Just left them on the <coughs> table and walked out? Uh, just walked out with them, didn't come back. And then uh, the three days later, the, the, the default was £3 million down and they paid it. Just a coincidence. That doesn't prove anything, but it turned out that the guy that was in there and bought the chips was worked for his uh, father, Fred Trump. That's it's another coincidence. A lot, lot of coincidences, yeah. But even it's not very subtle at all, is it though? And even at that point, like his dad is still going fucking why hell. But, but why didn't why didn't someone I don't know whoever would look into the FBI one? They go, well, clearly this is some kind of massive. This is theft. Well, there's no law. It's money there's laundering. No... Well, it's a loan. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a loan. This is money laundering. But again, yeah. like Trump, nothing gets put down on paper. So, well, how can you prove it? A man walked in and buy chips. Not illegal to walk back out with them. Okay, what's well, my dad? What? What? The, you know, but it's basically putting money into the business by, as he does, surreptitious methods. Like just no. moving it all around. Isn't yeah. It? Just I mean, they say uh, something recently said the reason he talks to people is because he doesn't like things being written down. And he says, like, I don't, like in, oh, there's one of those things, just a little thing, but talking about like, like, the people, uh, like, uh, goes to like. In the, the, the documentary, the Scottish one, um, the, you've been trumped, the old boys had his water cut off. Like, he's just been cut off, they said, because uh, he wouldn't move. And they built up a load of mud around his house and all this stuff, that the building work that was going on around him, tortured him, tor- turned his water off. A journalist goes down to see the guy who owns, who's the manager of the site. Just seems like a fucking arsehole, like, being cocky and, you know, silly weird shit. Is that camera on and all that sort of stuff? Kicks him out. And just a little thing as they're leaving, he said, I'm a journalist, you know, I'm not doing anything, I'm just asking questions. You know, are you trying to catch me out? I'm like, no, I'm just a journalist, I'm just asking questions. And as he comes out, the manager that Trump's hired to run this building worker, he says to the cameraman, That's a nice camera, is it expensive? And you think, Oh, you fucking low level thug. Like, oh, is it? Yeah, but that's what Trump's like. It'd be a shame Don't if fre- something happened to it. Yeah. Yeah. Shame, that one, shame if someone set fire to that camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But his thing is just like in his businesses, you don't say stuff. You, like Cohen said, you don't. He doesn't tell you to do anything. We said, wouldn't it be nice if? Oh, I wish that problem would go away. You know, he, th- that's what he does. But because he hates mafioso, though. Well, that's exactly what it is. Um, you know, calling people rats. You know, it, that's his mindset. Yeah. Is that? But um, it, well, apparently, I mean, there's stories of him and his dad going down when he was uh, very young. He was about seven or eight. Him and his dad used to go down to work sites at the weekend and pick up unused nails from the site. Oh, to you, like type to you, yeah, because 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 he was just that like, well, seems like no a point. French Trump, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no point in uh, this nail going to waste. And they used to go around and pick up like little bits of equipment, little bits of you know, um, you know, uh, building material, whatever, just just to save some pennies, you know. What, see, but what were they using them then for? What the next job? Yeah, well, the same job. Yeah. But see that see, people sure say efficient. Fred Trump. He yeah. was very he knew what he was doing, even though he you know he's funneling money to his son. That seems more like a Fred Trump thing. That's a logical thing to do, even though it's tight fisted. You go, yeah, pick up the loose and send them. Yeah. Trump would never do that. But Donald Trump would never do that. Bother, no. He wouldn't. He's not too because he doesn't think about anything that's happening. I just want to know that I'm doing something and my name's on it. I don't actually care if it fails or not. I think it's uh, this can sound quite. Uh, me bad but like, here we go but i think it's very telling that you know he's the family home that the fred trump home that he built he built this this very ex- reasonably expensive uh, big mansion but it was in one of the roughest neighborhoods in new york you know so he has a beautiful house in an area no one wanted to live in 
Yeah, and that's very... I'm ter- assuming very high walls and... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they never saw any of private drivers and they... You know, because you couldn't go down to the local shop, you know what I mean? You couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't step, out the, step out of the area because the whole place... And it was the 70s and 80s, so, I mean, crack and heroin. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the crack explosion. Just driving a school in a tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was all very dodgy. But, like, I think that's very telling, really, that, you know, that he was, he was the, the richest... that He had the most beautiful house in, in the dump, you know. He was literally king of, king of, the, king of the rubbish tip. Um, right, there's just a little lie that the, the, so the guy, Jonathan Greenberg, who um, spoke to him early on. It was just a thing about the way he thinks. So they said, they were talking about, so he was basically, he said to the guy that he owned almost all of the, the, the Trump uh, properties at that time, the Trump name. It turned out he owned barely anything, like nothing. He was saying, then he was building up the business of how many they had even though it wasn't his. So he's lying about how much they had yeah. of not his. And um, so this Jonathan Greenberg uh, spoke to him and he said, um, um, we've got like 25,000 condos and they're worth $40,000 each. What is a condo? I like you hear it. I think it's studio. Okay, I think that's what a studio is. I think. It's just, it's just don't I thought it was a bungalow. Oh, I, I'm not I don't con- know. I, 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 I think I, I, our top producer is going to have to get on this. Can we it's smaller than a flat. Because I hear it, <laughs> you hear it all the time. It's a very American. I never yeah. hear it only. I know someone had a condo, it's a two bedroom apartment. Okay. Okay. So I don't know what. Okay. Condo. So it might just be like a. It might be a term just for them that we don't use. Like yeah, we know. An apartment block, or maybe a flat in apartment block. No. That's condor. Has it got wings? All weighted, anyway, weighted breath here. Yeah. No, oh, no okay. So anyway, so he said there were 40,000 each. Now, the guy, Jonathan Greenberg, he said, I questioned him about the value. He said, surely they can't be worth that much. And he went, okay, well, about £20,000 each. <laughs> like, you mean, <laughs> he's making money. Whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> whatever you want. Make a deal. We'll make a deal. It's fine. Um, it turns out they were £9,000 each. Okay. Condo is like an apartment, but you also buy the condominium that's next to it. Yeah. Okay. It's just not buying an apartment, but it's just buying the space as a land as well. Okay, well, if you're listening to this, Google it. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll have to Google it. So it's, yeah. it's the, uh, yeah. it's the buying a separate house in an apartment. Okay. That's very odd. Right, so, and just... Well, we've learned nothing, but thank you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I'm more confused now, but no, no thanks. <laughs> he, um, uh, yeah, so he basically said uh, he owned all of it. It turned out he owned zero equity in it. And they were worth quarter of what you said, but he halved it immediately. Didn't he didn't half the um, Empire State Building at one point, though. Oh, don't know about that. Oh, yes, I think he did for a couple of years. Yeah. And, and he, but I think he said if he if he don't more, he'd have renamed it the Trump oh. Empire. Yeah, he wanted to name it the Trump <laughs> Empire State or Trump State Building or something. Yeah. Like uh, well, when you some combination of the yeah. words, the Empire it, it, Trump State Building, the, the State yeah, Trump Empire, so, some garbled word salad of <laughs> the Bigly, <laughs> <laughs> the Bigly Trump <laughs> Building. <laughs> when he. So the at most this, stable Empire State. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so at this point, he's just all these monies, all the tr- everything's just gone. He's just he can't I keep holding any money. Oh, they cost forty thousand things. And yeah, no, that's said, not possible. I questioned oh, it. Mine, he went, okay, twenty thousand. <laughs> he's like, are like, you no. bidding in reverse? What's yeah. going on? They're like, sounds a bit more easy. We get ten, and then like, well, <laughs> yeah, the fact yeah. they were nine thousand dollars. So this is the seventies or eighties. So this is they were. I can understand you're amount. inflating a bit, but yeah. Four, four but what it's times. to say the ninth shows he probably just he was guessing numbers. He didn't mm. even know. He wasn't one that you're lying. He just had no fucking clue. He wasn't even mildly tapped yeah. into what it was worth. Um, and uh, so, we, as he's into his thirties now, so he's got sod all. He had to borrow from other family members thirty-five million pound that he would inherit when his dad died. So from like the trust or something. Or yeah, <coughs> from them, and would be given back to him when the dad. Died. So he's fucking borrowing money from the like the inheritance of when his dad's dead to other family members to pay them back. Do you know what I mean? He's just grabbing at anything that's of value. Alpha move. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, that, that when he's like, that's future Trump's problem. <laughs> yeah. In uh, 2011, I never actually found out why the, a New York uh, judge, um, he must have handed some paperwork in for something, stated that, that they knew him. He said basically all of his money has come from his dad's inheritance. Like anything he's got now yeah. is from his dad's inheritance. That's in 2011. Obviously, oh, two o'clock. Okay, we've got to move on. Um, and in the 2016 campaign, he claimed he was worth 10 billion. So that's just a load of bollocks. Ten billion. I mean, yeah. it's just a made-up number again. It's a made-up number. Yeah. Um, 
I have some things I did want to get into, actually. Um, has anyone from his school time, you know, has anyone come no, forward no from one military anything, and no. said, yeah, I used to give him wedgies? Um, uh, well, I, I, so. I have heard stories. I heard stories that he, um, that one of the reasons he got chucked out of his first school and went to military academy is because he was, he threw something at the teacher. I think he threw something and hit But that would be, have to be quite a lot to, to get you chucked out of the school. I mean, um, I'm not saying like, oh, it's no thing to throw something at a teacher, but... But he was constantly, you know, giving chat and, you know, refusing to do stuff and was physically, uh, was physical, sorry, to, to some of the staff there. So I th- uh, that's what Physical, I like, violent or physical, yeah. like... Yeah, physical, violent. Pussy grabbing. Violent. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it later on. Um, right, so his dad died in June 1995, age 93. Woohoo! I'm assuming that's what he said. Um, what, what, on version. his deathbed? That was <laughs> like, his last no, words. Trump. <laughs> oh, right, Donald. Donald. Right. right. Um, so that, uh, Woo-hoo, the so this is what happened. <laughs> so the Times reported in 1990, uh, uh, so I think it was five years before, yeah, yeah, five years before his dad died. Trump had tried to con his own father by uh, rewriting Fred Trump's will and getting him to sign it. Um, the dad even then knew this. This is like Jeremy Kyle level kind of stuff, isn't it? This I mean, is the life of your father bailing you out. Yeah. The dad said, I knew there was something wrong. I think he said that you smelt something fishy was the quote. Um, so he got his daughter, who was the, the uh, federal judge at the time, to look at it. She stepped in <clears throat> and realised, she said, no, he's trying to move things around so that when you're dead, he gets everything. That, like he's trying to con the family. Basically. And, and, and had the younger, um, sorry, had the older brother died by this point? Yeah, I think he died by this. He's yeah, he would have died a few yeah. years before. Um, so Fred Trump had to get... So he didn't even want to share half. He's just, his dad was, was saying that basically the, the, the whole thing's going to fail. When I'm gone, all the money's going to go because he's going to funnel it into businesses that are just going to fail. Yeah, he's going to piss so, it up. Yeah. Wall, yeah. And but, is, the mother, is the mother still around? Is yeah, Trump's she's still, still alive at this point, yeah. Um, is, she, is she really? Yeah, she's Scottish. I don't know if she's still now, though. Oh, tell, tell like, I'm talking about the the... she did an interview on the BBC probably about... Ten years ago, I kind of imagine they'd wheel her out when they just. She had that sort of Barbara Cartland look to her, sort of fur jacket, the pearls. She, she looked. Because she was young, uh, quite a bit younger than. Uh, oh, Fred, she, Fred, Fred Trump is that right? Yeah, yeah she's got like a strong a Scottish accent. If you see an interview with her, but that was about ten years ago. So I should have seemed fine then, but I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, so basically, he had to get a lawyer in to rewrite it. Um, in quote to protect his assets from DJT, which was was his company. Um, which were Donald Trump's uh, creditors. But um, so he had to get his daughter in to read it and say, no, this is bollocks. And now you have to rewrite it again. To I mean, that sure. must be really sort of heartbreaking to. Yeah, your dad's just. For all of them. I think at that point, you just know he's a piece of shit. But Jesse, you, know, you, you kind of think, like, look, he's conned all these other people. He's conned, you know, yes, he's lied to me. Yes, he's taken, you know, he's always coming to me for handouts and everything. But here I am on my deathbed. Well, and listen, he's, still... and he's looking for an angle, yeah. And also, he's trying to take it from my daughter, you know, half. From my daughter, you've got to look at just it. the whole family. I just want it all, so I can flitter I mean, it away. Is, is, is there a big? You know, did Fred have a lot of brothers? And you know, there are a lot of cousins. Isn't right, it? Yeah. Isn't that? You know? I think there were some grandkids was in part of the trust thing as well. But basically, he's angling it, mm. so it wasn't like I get the money like written. It was done in a way where the businesses, the money would be funneled into those. But he knew those businesses. He's, my son's an idiot, so it's going to fail. Mm. Um, but anyway, he wasn't sure, so he got the the, the daughter in who was a judge to mm. check it through. And she said, "Yeah, this is." bollocks <laughs> so anyway but leave him alone you know why i'm saying leave him alone why who, who are we leaving he's alone? apparently a religious man donald trump right he's claimed to be a religious man he's done he did some things in iowa where he's holding up a bible he read some bits of the quote of the bible flames <laughs> but it was funny he was using american steam <laughs> steam came off yeah. the hill, like, ah! <laughs> so trump claims to be a religious man and say and he's quoted many times as saying the bible's his favorite book yeah. Mainly after, when he after the art of the deal. Yeah. Mainly. After the art of the deal and the no, Bible. I think, I think he was humble words. enough to say that in the Bible, then the art of the deal. I think he was humble yeah, enough. Yeah, he, he was famous to say the art of the deal is my second favourite book. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I mean, it's not very Humility. humble to say your yeah. second favourite book is your own book. <laughs> right, so... Um, it's like rappers saying, oh, my, what's your favourite album? Oh, well, my album. The album I just dropped. That's my favourite. That's and my favourite like, uh, album all the time. We're still Alan, buying it anyway. Just Alan Partridge, him. he said he was asked what was his fav- uh, uh, favourite album of the Beatles. And he went, the best of the Beatles. <laughs> the <laughs> best of the Beatles. <laughs> Probably <laughs> the best of the Beatles. <laughs> right, so um, he says about going to court and things like this and uh, going to... Um, uh, church and the Bible is his favourite thing but his pastor from, from where they grew up and the way he got married and all the family used this church just piped up on Twitter when he heard him talking like this 
So David Lewicki was his past Trump's family pastor, tweeted about Trump's claim from religious um, proclivities. The tweet read, I was Donald Trump's pastor for five years at Marble Church. I assure you, he had the option to come to Bible study. He never opted in, nor did he ever even actually enter the church, not one time. End quote. Well, he hadn't been invited over the threshold. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if he was there, it's, it's, it's very like difficult. Dracula, he has to be invited yeah, 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 into yeah, yeah. The, um, And uh, anyway, so he was on, uh, you watch this video. We even put some soil from his homeland <laughs> for him to rest in. <laughs> but, uh, in 2015, he was on Bloomberg Politics Show, which was the night after he'd been to Iowa holding up the Bible and reading verses, um, which he couldn't read properly. So he I was, was going to say, riffing, just, I'd love mum, to Mumbling his way. He was riffing, <laughs> and he was going, yeah, tremendous, Lord, that's yeah, a tremendous yeah, quote, that's, all that sort yeah, of oh, stuff. Oh, God. Um, so one of them just said, oh, like, it's great that you're a Christian, blah, blah, blah. He, he said... Um, and you've got to watch it. He said, could you give me a couple of your vo- favorite verses or quotes from the Bible? And like, genuinely, he's not trying to trick him. He said, this like, because this was the night before he's holding the Bible. Because um, he'd been rallying the night before in Iowa. Trump said, quote, I wouldn't want to get into it. It's very personal, end quote. When pressed by the second host of the show to answer, well, which do you prefer, the Old and the New Testament? He said, quote, um, probably, pause, equal. <laughs> So that's how specific you got with it. Yeah, but that's also is that maybe trying not to, um, you know, no. some people are more for the. No, 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 no. See, you're doing it again. You're giving him too much credit. What he thought is, I don't know the difference between the two. That's the, yeah. And uh, I don't want to say one thing because I might be the wrong one. So I'm just going to go, um, equal. Because the Old Testament has equal. more battles. Um, yeah, he doesn't know. But the New Testament he doesn't has know the difference. The big battle well, at the end. To, yeah, well, well one's New harder, Testament's isn't it? shorter, I think. So, yeah. like, you know, it's a bit more, it's a bit more chilled out. And it's yeah, some of it, some of it. Is, yeah. um, right, I'm going to speed up a little because I want to get onto some bits. But um, did you watch the re- so the briefings haven't been going on? Sarah Sanders hasn't been doing any briefing. They've done two in 2019, whereas they've done subtle two briefings, official briefings. But they did one recently last week, and it was for the Bring Your Kids to Work Day. Have you seen the video? No. Right. So they did it, and it's basically kids, and she's up there on the podium, and then she, they speak, and it's like, what? Who's Trump's favorite ice cream? You know, that sort of stuff. Oh, well, so it's just a, uh, the press. Yeah, it's an official thing. Like, it's bring your kids to work day in America. So they brought kids into isn't, the world. Isn't every day for him bring your kids to work? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I'll be a hero away. Right. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and you can watch the video of this now. Yeah. So he goes out onto the lawn. So. This is Trump talking to kids. What? Go and watch it. I've seen, the way he does the Cub Scout. I've seen the Cub Scouts. Oh, I don't know what that is. Um, so he says, quote, I see beautiful children, products of the media, and actually I like you more than you like, I like your parents. End quote. It's a bit harsh. So he's having a moan at About the their mum and Watch there. it. You see him say, I like you more than your parents. Um, anyway, so they showed the kids. No, wait, wait, hold on. I like you more than your parents like you, or I like you uh, more this than is I the like quote. your parents? I see beautiful children, products of the media, and actually I like you more than your parents. I'm assuming he means more. I like you more than your parents. Your Remember, parents, a lot of his man, quotes, yeah. they're a bit gobbledygook. Like, as I was writing them down, I had to reread them and go, that doesn't make sense. So he doesn't, he's not good at forming uh, com- um, uh, sentences. Um, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but it's only when you put it on, you look at it in oh, words. So the transcripts, I, I've got, I actually uh, printed out like one or two transcripts. Like, uh, and it's, it's like, it, it's like someone just took some words and just yeah, threw you, them against the wall, like some sense, scrabble yeah. and, just, and just sort of rearranged them. It's like, um, it's like cut and paste um, poetry. It's like kind of, <laughs> um, uh, Gins, uh, 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 William Thingy, what's it? Shakespeare? No, um because uh, William isn't much of a clue, I'm afraid. No, Wordsworth? Who was the the guy, you know, forty the beat uh, the beat poet, cut and paste guy. Oh what's his name? Oh god, I forgot. I, forgot. I read some of his books. The only beat poet I can ever Naked think of Lunch. is Ginsburg. Oh, um yeah, Gins- William uh it's not Baldwin, but it's um it's some I know, you, <laughs> yeah, I know who you're naked. It's William. Anyway, yeah, sorry, it's like, yeah, but it's literally like a cut and paste thing where this oh, guy okay. created uh, poetry and sort of no- novels by literally just getting a bunch of words and phrases and just oh, snipping Jesus. them up yeah. and then just rearranging them around. Just junk, and it's yeah. like that. And it's kind of this weird kind of rhythm and beat to it. Well, so yeah, this Naked Lunch is all the different chapters. Yeah. Uh, they're not so these kids sorry, have yeah. been shown around the White House and all that sort of stuff, so, you know, paintings of various people. So he went on to say, quote, you've seen pictures from people all over the world, talented, talented people. I wish they could make me look just a little bit better. Sometimes I think they do it on purpose, actually. Oh. So he's saying that he's having a pop at people. 
to the kids, <laughs> even about their parents. You know, I like your parents more. You know what I mean? This is just pathetic. It, like, does, it just makes them children. sound a little bit sad, doesn't it? Just a little um, bit. So that's a couple of his ridiculous quotes. So I've got some other stuff here because we haven't got long, so I'm going to try and uh, ramble through. I like this was maybe the early years where we're, we're pretty much up to well, date. No, no, I mean, we're, we're, okay, so... Um, right. What was his wife's name? It's not Ivanka. It's Ivanka. Melania. That was because Ivanka is his Ivana. daughter. Ivana was the first wife. The, the second wife, yeah. one was <clears throat> Martha Mar- Maples. Martha Maples. Yeah. So he married Ivana in 1977. I think she was. She's on. She, she's on a fourth marriage now. So that's the woman. Um, he Before. cheated on Ivana with Marla Maples, who's an actress Maples, presenter. Yeah. Um, then he got a new girlfriend. Um, what was her bloody name? Uh, Anyway, but he took her, oh, it rhymed with Carla. So that was the big thing. She, Carla was her name. So the, <laughs> tr- the, the newspapers loved that. So he went from Marla to Carla. Um, to Melania. And then Melania. Anyway, so he, he um, well, when he went with Marla, he took Marla on holiday with him, with Ivanka, when things were not going well. So that was nice of him. Take the family away and take your girlfriend away. They had a, there was a big fight. Some say like went physical, but it was in a restaurant where she was basically saying, I love your husband. You don't love him. So that was nice of him to take her, and it all kicked off. So then he got married to Marla. Um, apparently, there was a lot of... Um, he, he, the, the, uh, Ivana phoned a journalist, Liz Smith. Yeah, Liz Smith from the Daily News. She got a call um, when things had gone tits up because it looked like he's got that abusive mindset. And she said, um, Ivana phoned me in tears and said, can I meet? And he, she said, yeah, and they met in one When you say abusive mindset, what do you mean? Yeah, he, bit, yeah he was rude to Empire. He didn't okay. like her being the centre of attention. And then when you take your girlfriend, your new girlfriend that you're having an affair with, on holiday to, with Classroom your thing. wife, yeah. that's, a, that's a controlling thing. That's a bit like but they, um, sort of thing. They'd, they've been having an affair. Like, there's okay, no, okay. Okay. Um, Quite a public affair at that And point, then she so like, basically pages. went up to her and she started an argument with Ivanka, saying, like, Ivana, saying, like, fuck you, sort of thing. Like, I love him, you don't. But that's on the holiday. Do you know what I mean? It's so an order, but what was his, a, what That's was an his, abusive mindset. Well, what was his pitch to take her on the holiday? Well, his thing, he kept out of all this, so he doesn't even mention any of this. He, doesn't quote, he, as he didn't say, oh, I'm just bringing my friend. I'm assuming it might have been a family. You know, I think in America, people do that, bring people, especially to Aspen. It's quite a, you know, bring your cousin, bring your friend sort of thing. It's a, it's a tourist. It wasn't, oh, she's my I PA. Think, I think, it was, a it, family, I think it was a family kind of thing, a friend to family. You know, sometimes okay, you get, you know, different families going on. Anyway, yeah. so Ivana um, uh, uh, met with Liz, um, the uh, New York Daily News caller. And she, she said, um, it, uh, she met up, she said she was in tears. She gave me a big hug. She said, oh, like, Donald doesn't want to be with me anymore. Uh, be with me anymore. So Liz Smith from the New York uh, Daily News uh, phoned him up. And Trump said to her, this is a quote, I don't want to sleep with women who have had a children. End quote. Fair play. I mean, I don't want to sleep with <laughs> I to- women who I totally get children. that. Yeah, this is a wife. I don't want to sleep with women who have had children. Look at you sniggering like <laughs> um, Yeah, so... Uh, do you want to, for the record, uh, say <laughs> that that was a joke, Charles? Um, He's relying on the visuals again. Cu- We're on audio. Cu- <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll walk it back then. Yes, yes, that was a joke. But Wink. The, no. Uh, <laughs> but when he's saying that, does he mean like, so even his own wife? Yeah, well, that's what she said. She said, what, well, even your own wife? I didn't get the quote after, but basically the quote was, I don't want to sleep with women who have had children. So, so not like, oh, that have had children with other men kind of thing. Just I think, not it, that's I better, think he's saying this to a journalist that he knows yeah. a journalist. I think it's another that abusive thing. It's a, He's sending out a nasty message to her. He's trying to hurt her. Yeah. That's what he's trying to do. That's what the abusive mindset is. Because then didn't is. he have a child with Marla? Yeah. I mean, I obviously left her. But then Tiffany, yeah, who we never hear about. But anyway, so he... Probably sensible for her. Marla didn't last. <laughs> he got rid of her and went with Carla <laughs> and then ended with Carla. Bruni. Yeah. Um, I did have a quote. Did you read the quote about when he phoned up his John whatever? And um, he he phoned... Uh, yeah, let me try and find it here. So then, so he then had Carl... So, so then his girlfriend <laughs> was Carla. And then he got rid of her and got Marla. No, I thought, you were, I thought it went Marla, then Carla. Or oh, sorry, Carla? no, Marla, then Carla. Yeah, you're right. And then how long was he? Why? why he likes his A's at the end of women's names. It helps if it rhymes. It's yeah, just yeah, easy yeah. to remember. Bar, 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 car, la, ba, la, la. But um, why, um, it's not to, to piss on her chips, but why? Because obviously Ivan, he was married to and had children with. Yeah. Then he, he had a child with Marla and they were married. Yeah. 
Obviously, Milana is, is his current wife and the first current wife is Ivan <laughs> anticipating divorce um, and the first lady. Even so, Why is Carla um, notable? Because oh, I'm assuming he must have had other girlfriends. Um, I don't think marriages. particularly notable. I think she was just... She's just the one it, in it between. It was the rhyming yeah. name that said oh, everyone okay, loved. Fine, the right. fact that, that they could just put on that. Otherwise, it would just be another bird. So it's not like know? they were together for um, 10 years. No, and years. they seem to be fairly friendly about the divorce. So... I think he just got bored and she Who, got Marla bored. or yeah. Carla? No, but what I'm saying is why why is Carla significant after Marla? She's not. She's not. Marla's they just like the fact that her name yeah. rhymed. It was basically, they said, oh, this is like a godsend. I don't think, like I said, even after with Marla, there was no big thing. It just didn't work out and they were polite to each other. Because um, um, what's his relationship like with Ivana? Beyond, I think they sort of talk, but I don't think there's any. She sort did of some bonkers interview where she was saying, "No, I'm the first lady." And that was um, my impression of her. I don't know about that. that. She has. I regret it immediately. She's she's been relatively um, uh, politic about his presidency, yeah. as in she hasn't come out and been critical. But yeah. she did do that one interview where she was saying, "I'm the real first lady, and everyone knows it." And, and, and it's like, "Well, you're dem- you're not love because you're not married no, to him." And, and, yeah. <laughs> well, I think she still gets some echoes of like being part of that Trump thing. So she doesn't. Well, want she's the uh, mother of the what is. It, Ivanka, Don Jr., and yeah, Eric. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose they've got kids together. So yeah, they've got three, haven't they? Three but she's on her yes. fourth. I think she got married after that. She does love getting married, yeah. to be fair. Um, before I forget, so just one of these stupid things about Trump. So there was um, about him putting on the fake voices. Yeah. So Sue Coswell, uh, yeah, Carswell, a journalist from People Magazine, once um, got a call from a guy called John Miller, who was one of his. Oh, okay. He likes his John's, yeah, um, to speak with her. Now, she knew. Like about everything about the Trump, she'd been going backwards and forwards with him. She knew everything. He said, "Suddenly, this guy Trump." She said, "When the guy started saying he worked for Donald Trump, she said, oh, it's funny that he sounds exactly like Donald Trump. He's hired somebody that sounds so exactly like him.' So he didn't like even try him. and put on a voice. If you listen to it, it's pathetic. It's him, and he uses words like awesome. Oh, well, they've got a, all, they've got a. There's yeah, audio. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can listen to the audio on the documentary. Oh, that's yeah. quite funny. Yeah. Oh, okay, it, I didn't it's him that. going eh, like, uh, "Hi, no. you know, it's oh, pathetic." No. And he used to speak, you, when he talks. You can hear it's him the way he talked. You know, he the, can't. The he cadence. can pay. He, he can pay tremendous. like an intern. Yeah. Right. So basically, he said, "I'm John him. Miller, um, uh, and I'm his new PR manager." And she was like, "That's quite a big role. Like, who is he anyway?" Um, yeah, you think she would have heard of? <laughs> yeah, she yeah. said, "I'd never heard of him. I know the company." She actually had to phone up afterwards, the phone call, and spoke to the the main girl that run everything for him, and said, "Who's that guy?" And she went, "Oh, that's." T- the Donald Trump. Oh, so she immediately <laughs> sold him yeah, out. She went, oh, oh, he just he just does that sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he um, just pretends to be like PR people. So they were talking about uh, this is after the divorce fell through. He got this phone call. And he said, "Quote." So this is him, Donald Trump, with a funny voice, and he said, "Quote." He's somebody who has a lot of options, and frankly, he gets called by everybody in the book in terms of women. I mean, they call him. They just call actresses, people that you write about, just call to see if they can go out with him. Madonna called and want to go out with him. That I can tell you. I mean. He just phoned up. Madonna surprised it. Because I guess but it was a lie. Saying, yeah. He's basically phoned up a journalist and said, women love me and go and tell people. And oh, by the way, Madonna. It's not, it's, not, um, it's not beyond the realms of sort of anything that, you know, um, someone's going to go with him just to be with his money or just to get photographed with him if you're some young, you know, whatever. Yeah, but remember with him, him it's what with people Madonna? are thinking of him is more important than what's going on. So he just wants the story to be out there, to be known has as somebody. He, has he ever had any sort of famous girlfriends, as it were? Only that porn star, but even then, it's not a girlfriend, is it? The oh, what, Stormy Daniels? Yeah, because well, yeah, there was an NDA attached to I mean, you can so. imagine he's banging birds all over the place and throwing money out. I mean, when he went to Russia, like this thing about they've got something on him. I yeah. mean, he's too dumb to know that if he went to Russia and they know he's a rich guy with a name, they haven't forethought, I let's feel stick like some cameras do. up in yeah, this place and traps. throw a load of women at him and we'll yeah. keep that in the stocks. It's the alleged, it's the alleged um, golden shower, isn't it? Yeah. But I sort of feel if you're going to go somewhere, you know, as a kind of guest, I'm like, right, that's not the time to do your kinky shit. Right, do your but kinky shit. He's elsewhere. gullible and he's stupid and he's on impulses. So they've gone there as yeah. mature people going, oh, this guy's coming over. Let's have the thing in Russia. What is it? The women's, uh, yeah. the, 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 what, the women get trolled out to. What's it called? Honey Fame. trap. No, the 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 award oh. ceremony with the women looking beautiful. Oh, oh uh, Miss, uh, Miss, yeah, yeah. So that's what. Anyway, because he's so, done well, that, didn't well, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. done that. So they got him over there and just thought this fucking idiot. Let's bung it. Yeah, don't do your kinky stuff. And, like, he's you know, too do stupid. It at home. But I'm sure it's. I I think it was more of a sort of Godfather Part Two bit, as in you just go for a business trip somewhere and someone goes, "Hey, do you want to see something crazy?" And like they just go into a room and there's some weird shit going on. And you're like, "Huh, that's a bit weird." But knowing how they think and the KG, but you can go. They they were set up and that was just put in the bank vault. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Um, 
Right, so there's, I think it was just about his mental health state. So this is just one of the statements he had. Um, and I'm just, it was about, he was talking about the, the climate thing, because obviously he doesn't believe in anything like that. And I'm reading this out, and this is, I'm just going to read, li- and I rewrote, read this about a thousand times to make sure I haven't missed words out. So this is what he's talking about. Quote from Donald Trump. One of the problems that a lot of people like myself have, we have very high levels of intelligence. But we're not necessarily such intelligent be- intelligence. Oh, right. But we're not necessarily such believers. You look at our air and our water, and it's right and it's right now at record clean. This was last year. And no. record clean. So that didn't makes no fucking sense. No. He went on to say, and when you're talking about an atmosphere, oceans are very small, and it blows over and it sails over. Talking about what? Po- poly pollution. No. It doesn't make any sense. No. That's verbatim. This is videos as well. You can watch this. Uh, in quotes. I mean, we can talk... We, we take thousands of tons of garbage off our beaches all the time that comes from Asia. It just flows right down the Pacific. It flows. And we say, where does it come from? And it takes many people to start off with. Now, the interview that was playing the video... I'm just trying to, like... No, this is what I'm saying. The interview that was playing the video said, this makes... The words don't make any yeah. sense. So I'll just say it again. Quote, I mean, we take thousands of tons of garbage off our beaches all the time that comes from Asia. It just flows right down the Pacific. It flows, and we say, where does it come from? And it takes many people to start off with. So his, it so his argument is what? That because there's... Asia has a lot of people. In yeah, it. but That's it's the ending of the state. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, the bit where he says, again, quote, and when you're talking about atmosphere, oceans are very small. Yeah, that's what I don't... So again, he doesn't know anything. Like, nothing. He doesn't know anything. If he means, like, the ocean in terms of its depth is... No, he's not. He's not. He's, he, like, he's trying to say pollution I, I, is everywhere. Yeah. I don't know. Where he's, I thought I had it there. There's, there's yeah. always a level of interpretation with all this stuff, and the, and this is one well, of the reasons uh, why he's. So, I think yeah, you, know you have to sort of try and read into like what the actual meaning is and decipher yeah. it. And there's always a level of that, and this is why I think so many people read stuff into him. Like they say, oh, he's a he's a good man, he's a good Christian, he's this, he's that, he's a Republican, he's a Democrat, he's this and that, because he's so vague and loose with but everything, I think and it's so bizarre all his statements. Intelligent people are trying to not get around the fact that he's not mentally. Well, so it's like the pencil on the floor in an art house. You start to build up stories about why the pencil's on the floor and is it a piece of art. <laughs> what you're trying to do is get around the fact of going, oh, no, he's not right in the head. Yeah. Maybe that, maybe he... No, he's not right in the head. Yeah. Um, right, so we're going to speed up. So uh, some of his failed companies, so I'm just going to go into them. You might have forgotten about them because uh, there's a lot more. Um, <laughs> so these aren't bankruptcies. These are things that got sold on, blah, blah, blah. It, well, it technically weren't bankruptcies, but the companies now run under this name. Um, Trump Airlines... And they weren't sold for a profit. No, they were broken down. And, you know, yeah, they yeah, didn't they go into bankruptcy out. section 11, I think, whatever it's called. Um, so Trump Airlines, yeah. Trump Beverages failed, Trump Board Game failed, Trump <laughs> Magazine failed, Trump Mortgages failed, Trump Stakes failed, the Trump Travel Site failed. Oh, I thought Trump Stakes were still going, or is no, that no? Trump I think they've stopped now. Comms, yeah. which was a phone company, failed. Trump University failed and Trump Vodka failed. So all these companies have failed and then they're not running anymore. So Trump University was another, yeah, basically, the big, big scam. Like, big scam. Has that lawsuit been settled now? He did have to pay people back because yeah. he was running for the, the policy and they knew they were trying to, hu- they had to hurry it through because he was going to become president and then you wouldn't have been able to sue him. Um, but people were getting paid back, but nothing, they didn't get paid back properly for what had happened. He, like, he took, didn't they even have to stop calling it Trump University because it wasn't It wasn't a class of university. university. That was the main crime he committed, like so the, technically by the law. Because other than that, what people were saying is basically it was a sales pitch. Mm. So it wasn't a university, but he got in trouble for saying it's a university. Yeah. But the, the, the main membership for that was $35,000. Yeah. I mean, it was a proper con. When you look into it, it turned out you were supposed to be getting, men- meet Donald Trump, you were supposed to be mentored, ongoing, by somebody he had personally trained. It's when it all fell apart and they, they got people, and you can watch the interview online. Because I don't mind, yeah, it's a shame, obviously, I mean, maybe people shouldn't be sucking in by this thing, but I don't mind, for example, uh, there was a thing about Mar-a-Lago, you know, his, his, the private members club, and it's, you have to pay a hundred grand initiation fee, and now it's gone up to 200 grand. Million, yeah. yeah, and oh, oh, okay, it's gone up even more. But that, I'm like, oh, these rich suckers want to hang out and say yeah. that they go to Mar-a-Lago, fine. 
Uh, no, one mind. woman who was on the, in but, the, the documentary said there was a guy who came out of the, the, the army, he's a, an amputee, and um, basically he'd used all his money to mm. do this course to sort of build a life for himself. Um, and one guy that worked for them said, look, he started to realise what this was because it's not going anywhere. You're just getting in money from people. Um, and he tried to quit and then they were going to try to get him. They ended up throwing him out of the building because this guy said, I'm not doing this. This isn't like, well, I, I thought it was a thing. I thought it was a okay. university, not just get money. Yeah, in. it's a bit, yeah, that's... Because he wouldn't sign up certain people because they didn't have money and they were telling them they would make you give all your financial records out so they could help you but the, all they were good doing is trying to see how much credit you could get further on. Yeah. So you, they were telling you to immediately go out and get more credit. So it was just a big fucking con. Um, it ruined a lot of people's lives. Um, so then, it, yeah, that went tits up. It turned out all the mentors um, had never even met Trump. And they'd never been part of it. They'd worked for like retail food companies and th they had nothing to do with property. They said, we've never met him. There's one interview with the guys on there and it was quite f frankly talking to say, look, it was a sales pitch. Look, that's all it was. It wasn't a thing. It was a guy who was like a Burger King manager. I mean, <laughs> he was like, he was sort of head of, head of economics at the department. But you can uh, earn quite good money. It's... Um being manager of Burger King, isn't it? No, as in, uh, yeah, being the actual king <laughs> of the burgers. Um, I can't remember which chain it is, but they were talking about how they actually earn, you know, they can earn up to, I think if you're a franchise manager, it's, it's not one we have over here. It's I can't remember the brand now, uh, so it's not the best story. But they're earning, you know, the, the, the managers are earning, you know, 150 grand. They're like, why go to college? Uh, it's like an in and out burger it, it's not in and out burger but it's something it's like those, it's one, one of those, those ones we don't have yeah. yeah or we might have one or two in London and that's it but yeah they're earning 150 grand right so if, um, sorry yeah, this isn't very professional but uh, Karen what time is it it's uh, almost two oh. okay right we'll finish at five minutes so um, we've got two things to say so I said I thought I've been I was watching him anyway over because I like watching weird personalities to see how they play out and I try to match him with people I know so I've kept an eye on him and it was only recently where the things he's actually come out and said quotes that have stopped making sense and people have started questioning his mental health. And I've come to the conclusion, something about it, that I haven't heard anybody say, and this is from me watching people and knowing his pattern, it matches up with my patterns and things. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's literate. I, from how he is and how his life has been and how he's surrounded himself with people and how he talks, he's like me in that, what he's done, he's put a lot of things in place so he doesn't have to read. Yeah, he said he's open though. He does say, I don't read. No, but I'm saying I don't think he can read. Oh, right. Uh, I think from the start, people say he likes to make deals. He doesn't like paperwork. He doesn't like to read things as a thing, thinking he's lazy. But I think he's just put things in place like I used to do of making sure I didn't have to read because it's too difficult to read. And there's a thousand, not just the fact he doesn't read. That's an easy thing to say. It's, I was watching back his auto cue stuff, and he does what I do, where I write stuff down. It takes me a long time, but I have to write key words. So I just look at the key words. And what he does when he reads stuff back, you can tell he's got an auto cue, but mm -hmm. he'll have a word and then riff and go off somewhere, have another word, and he'll go off somewhere. And it's a constant, if you watch for patterns, Bigly, that's what tremendous. it does. And then it, he just fills Huge. in the gaps. Yeah. He also does a thing that I used to do is where, I'm forgetting what I'm saying. So I say things like tremendous, absolutely mag. And when I'm going off in that riff about terrible, terrible, or absolutely, completely, and what I'm doing is I'm holding my brain there because I'm trying to think of what's the next thing to say. Yeah. And that's why he does those things. Now, onto his tweets, you go, well, how he's tweeting. He only wants his own phone. He's very personal. He won't use the presidential phone. He uses his own Didn't phone. Didn't they try and take it off him yeah, briefly? I mean, he's, he, yeah, he freaked out, yeah. yeah. Um, and I was looking at his tweets, and they were saying he keeps putting mistakes in his tweets of words, but the rest are spelt fantastically. So I think he's using some sort of... Well, he like speaks. He speaks. You know, the, the, the things you can get, we talk. Oh, what, and it types for you? And it's putting oh. wrong words in. And, like I would do... Like somebody said to me, like, I mean, I don't want really to go into it, but because um, there are weird capitalized there's letters. There's weird capital, and I think there, he's bits. specifically saying stuff, it's being written out. He's then putting in words to make himself sound smart, but that's when they suddenly become capitalized for no reason, specific words. Um, and then when there are words that just don't make any sense, I think, oh, it's mental health. It's no, because it's just, it's come up like auto that. Sort of auto but the main thing is when I've watched it and I've gone back over the stuff he does and how he talks and the, these movements and everything is just people. He's very good with people. Did we ever find out what Kofefi was meant to be? 
Oh, oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, it was, yeah, because it was in context. You could figure it out by context. Yeah. I think it, it was... Committee um, or something like that? Uh, confidential or something. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. But it's something innocuous, anyway. Yeah. If it, so then all I do is I go back to, okay, his early life. How was he? How has he been? The salesman thing. People, gets people, doesn't do a lot of work, doesn't focus on anything. I definitely think there's an ADHD dyslexia thing in there that hasn't been sorted. Like going back to say about being naughty at school, it's not... You're not that person. What you're doing is you're, you're making up for the fact, I can't do the work. So I have to do everything around it, whether it's being annoying or just tell people to do stuff and walk off. I can't do any work, so I have to create things. So I think he's illiterate, and he's ne- nobody's actually found out yet. So they think, oh, he doesn't like doing stuff. It's he can't. You heard it here. First. No, I genuinely think that it is. Now, five minutes. This is the worst thing I found out about him that I didn't realise. And this is it's not even worse funny. Worse than conning this. his father on his deathbed. Worse. <laughs> So, you ready for this? Okay. Don't jump to any conclusions. I'm just going to tell you what was been said because I thought I've got to cover myself here. So, there's been a lot of talk, and I didn't realize until I looked into it about his weird, how he treats his daughter, and there's some weird thing that's going on. Oh, yeah, Ivanka. It's always a bit like, oh, I date her. The kissing on the lips. He tried to kiss with his mouth open on one cheek. She had to move her face. Now, when you go back into it, these are things that had happened. So, I saw, it's only because I randomly saw a Michael Moore interview. Um, talking to somebody, oh, I did a, oh, on the uh, ET Canada, it's a video. Um, it's about Fahrenheit height, night 11. He was matching him to Hitler and said, like, well, Hitler didn't start off as Hitler. He started off, it's just that he broke down the constitution of Germany and then became Hitler. Same sort of thing. Um, and then it's talk, he said, look, talking about his daughter, he said, this man has real sexually, we know he's a sexual person, we know his sort of proclivities for whatever. He said, well, um, hasn't he got about 20? But everything to do with him. Is just about, that, yeah, exactly. So he's just a sexual person. He said, if a child in... Uh, so he was in Canada, and he's Canadian, but the show's in Canada. He said, by Canadian and uh, Californian law, if he had said certain things, one of them he mentions about his daughter, you were contractually obliged to have to tell the government, like the, the, the uh, council workers, what had been said by the, the child. And this is some of the things he said, okay? So then I think... Uh, outside the one on the Howard Stern show, all of this is you can watch, or there's an article. Yeah. And I'm going to end on this, because this is how I think this man is really, he's a sick human being. So um, this is about Dora Ivanka, oh, another one with an A at the end of the name. Um, so we, there's some things about him kissing her on the lips. and like I hadn't seen, I hadn't seen the stuff of him kissing her on the lips. Yeah, that was a, you could see it. He opens his mouth to kiss and she sort of moves her head. Um, so... Horrid. I just, I, because I thought, what? And I looked it up. So... On The View in 2016, you know the one where all the women sit around yeah. and talk. Um, he said about his daughter who sat with him, uh, if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. Oh, yeah, sorry. I and the woman that. actually went, that's sick. Like, that's disgraceful. Yeah, that's and then gross. somebody, she went, oh, who are you, Woody Allen? And they all laughed and clapped. I thought, what are you clapping and laughing? Have you just heard? Anyway. I suppose because you don't, you think like that obviously he's, they're giving him the benefit of the doubt and just thinking, oh, he's just saying something without really yeah, like, being, thinking about, yeah. you know, he's but trying to give his daughter a compliment and say that she's very beautiful yeah, yeah. and he's but then a great what, woman. She's fumbled it, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, what you do a... is you add it into the whole what's gone on before yeah. and then it all starts to add up. On the Wendy show, I think it's Wendy Williams is the name of the talk show, uh, Trump and Ivana were asked, and you can watch this, uh, what in they're Ivana having. Ivana or Ivanka? Sorry, I'm going to keep saying it. Ivanka is the, so daughter. the daughter. Yeah. yeah. So Trump and Ivanka were sitting next to each other, uh, were asked what they have in common. Ivanka replied, um, either property or golf. Donald replied Sounds to the same right. question, stating, oh, well, quote, I was going to say sex, end quote. I was going to say And she s- gives a funny, dirty look like, ha, 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 ha. But what does he mean, we have sex in common? I think the sexual people. Shall I tell you what I think all this is? <laughs> I think he's flirting with his daughter in some sick way. Because when you watch it, he's, he meets some, um, um, he's in a business meeting, and he's talking, meeting Miss World Scotland or something like that at the Trump thing. He, he's the same sort of stuff he says. He's not saying stuff directly. He just says, oh, you're a very sexy woman. Oh, wow, well, like you must have a good, you know, he's, he's that. And the way things come out, it is like he's flirting with his daughter. Anyway, so he said that in the Rolling Stones article 2015, he said about his daughter, yeah, she's really something, and what a beauty that one. I'm oh, sorry, quote, so, quote, yeah, she's really something, and what a beauty that one. If I weren't married, and you know her father, end quote. I feel like that should come before if I weren't married. Oh, this isn't the top ten. I've just put the, this isn't. I, I know, but that, that's the primary thing. Yeah, if I weren't physically, biologically related to And her, you know her father. And also she was single. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he also said on the Howard Stern show, he re- 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 responded to her as being voluptuous. Um, he said... 
quote, my daughter Ivanka, she's almost six feet tall. She's got the best body, end quote. Um, now, bearing in mind, this I is I mean, Dad's s- a quite, you know, Dad's will no, say said, their yeah, daughters are beautiful, yeah, no, but no, not, no. I don't, I don't think I've heard about yeah. If I wasn't married, yeah, like, that's trying to kiss on the mouth. Troubling, he said in I another think. thing, I, I didn't write it down. Um, if she had a sex tape, I'd totally watch it. Yeah. He yeah, said, basically, <laughs> he was on a show, I think it was the Dr. Oz show, and Ivanka came out and he kissed her, and the, the guy said, uh, Dr. Oz said, oh, like, it's nice to see a father kissing a daughter, and he said, I try to kiss her whenever ch- and every chance I get. Now, but the thing that, weird. now, what I'm saying is, you add all that up. Well, well, I don't, it's weird when they're older. Like, when you're, when, you know, my, um, my brother's got a son, and he yeah, loves again, to you're get grabbing a little, straw. But he's like three. Yeah. And he loves to get like a kiss off him. It doesn't often. But you don't say yeah. when I'm married. Uh, but it's also not at every opportunity. He's not just yeah. constantly going. And you look him. at some of the videos, and he's constantly they say his hands are always a bit too low around her hips. But like he's just. Uh, but it, I mean, he's. I think it's safe to say that obviously, yeah, we he's gone after. You know, I think there was something like twenty women have said he's inappropriate yeah. in the way he does. You know, said yeah. it. So he's obviously a. Um, He's not. I don't think uh, beyond the you know the obviously the pussy grabbing thing and beyond that. I don't think he's ever been. He's not been accused of rape, has he? Or I think no. he's, uh, he has. Oh, yes. he has. He has been sued. Yes, for rape. Yes. So he was, oh, he's been sued many times. I think that he's just they were yeah, paid though. He's, he's were settled paid, out of court. There it's was, the ones that have come back. That are, yeah, because that obviously. Well, I need to be really careful with this, but there was one <laughs> recently, and I, they dropped the suit. It was a Jane Doe case and connected to the Jeffrey Epstein uh, sex trafficking scandal. And it was a 13-year-old girl at the time. She Jesus. she has sued him three times. Uh, uh, sued Trump. Trump. Yes, okay. and it's been dropped every time. And she sued him recently, I think. I think within the last year, uh, it was the third one, and that got dropped, I think, allegedly. Okay. Now, well, remember, all these things, kind of... like, these are things you've heard. Like, think of things you haven't heard about mm. that people have been paid. Now, I threw that thing in at the end because it always, well, you know, we're taking the piss about what a disgusting human being is. Well, I think these are... <sighs> What Apparently, about, you know, oh, yeah, well, accused yeah. of. Accused. But um, yeah. the thing about his daughter just pushed me over the edge with him. I thought, oh, he is inside a human. He's nothing inside. He does not care. He's making completely. It's not that he's doing these things in front of the camera. So what goes on? No, not to say said, that that's acceptable to touch your. Daughter. No, but if that's but the, the that's the, the the tip of the iceberg, what goes on in his head, yeah. and you just add it up, What's and that's stuff he front? said on camera in yeah, front of people yeah, and yeah. in articles. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that in as just to show what. A, he is a sick human being. He's sick. It's not a, you can't, that sort of thing is the tip of the iceberg that you're hearing. Um, so to end it, unless you've got anything major you want to say, just what, any of your thoughts? Uh, no, Are I you just, coming um, around to the, how bad? Cause you, it's no, no, I didn't think, I, didn't, I never thought he was stuff. a great guy here, but I mean, obviously, um, I hadn't realised, I hadn't complained about that, what Charles mentioned there. Or saying if he wasn't married. Oh no, I had heard that one before. Yeah, I had <laughs> heard that before. Right, so, um, uh, this is a quote that was on the Sky News video. I think it was last year. Yeah. And you could watch it. And it was talking about England, so I thought I'd end on that. Lovely. Pure quote. Not made up. You can watch it. So it's a Sky News video. Are you going to do the voice? No. Uh, it's better, it's better without the, the voice. Hat. Give me a break. It gives it more credence cause yeah. with the voice because you can kind of forgive it. Cause you, it has this, he has a very weird sort of bouncy speech cadence. Um, he said, uh, quote, I have great respect for the UK, United Kingdom. Great respect. People call it Britain. They call it Great Britain. They call it... They used to call it England. <laughs> End quote. Okay. <laughs> now, first of all, the sentence doesn't make any fucking sense. So he says, they call it Great Britain. They call it... They used to call it England. Well, he sort of missed the... You know, that's a bit like saying, oh, um... Uh, no, I think he he's heard two terms... And only he hears the Great thing. Britain now. He doesn't hear England. And he's thinking, oh, England is an old term for Great Britain. Rather than knowing that England is a part of Great Britain. Yeah. And he didn't know Ireland wasn't part of the, the UK. He thought Ireland was part of it, not Northern. He, but that's fairly basic. But then neither did the Minister for Northern Ireland. So yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I let that one go, but they used to call it England. <laughs> so he's, and that's last year. He's learned nothing. Like, so his whole life, I would say, like I said, I think he can't read. Mm-hmm. And now you see it. 
yeah. you start to watch the, the tweets. I think, things. to be fair, that's the, you know, of could, the things we've learned today. And at talked best, about, I think, I think the, he's functionally illiterate. He can pick up on yeah. things, but he has to talk, and then it's just spiraled. That's what he does now. Well, well, well just, yeah, finally. Like, have you seen that? Um, there's a very famous deposition video where he's they, they ask him to read the contract. There's a deposition video where they... Oh, yeah, interview, when he has to yeah, answer, They yeah. interview him for about sort of seven or eight hours, and it's, it's on camera in front of a lawyer. So yeah, I've forgotten about that. And he, th- there's a bit where they he's like, oh, I don't know about the contract. I don't know. And they were like, well, look here's a copy of the contract do you want to read it could you read it out loud and it's like two pages and he just picks it up and it's like a petulant child and he's like there's a lot of words here yeah. and he sort of reads a sentence and sort of tails off and goes i don't know i can't read this i don't know what this i've means. forgotten about that yeah yeah so i'm putting my i'm saying he can't read and no one's ever realized from the school for the whole way through all of it how he acts why he talks so much why he doesn't pay attention to anything i think it's all because he can't read or at best, he's functionally literate. literate. Or presumably, uh, what we've learned is he can't uh, understand when a woman says no. Right? <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> doesn't understand the we, word no, especially. Yeah, I think that's what we've uh, so that's established. the Trump up to the president's the up to up to when he became president, basically. Yeah. So forget God knows what's coming down the pipeline. Maybe next year we'll be going. Oh my God, they were the good days <laughs> before well, the early went. years. Well, somebody said um, Michael Moore actually said. Um, he said, remember when uh, he wrote an article, I think it's in Fahrenheit 9-11, at the end he says there's an article in the magazine by Jewish people saying, don't worry, look, whatever Hitler does, there's a constitution. And he said, you know, Germany did have a constitution before he decided not to pay attention to it. So don't think um, your constitution means anything to I think it's. I think it's still quite a leap. Oh, so you're doing the same old thing, no. so did they. But anyway, so I say uh, he can't read and the world has been fooled and he's just got used to it. Um, and then everything sort of imploded behind that. Yeah. Um, and I would say he's pretty disgusting for the things he said about his daughter, which you will have to leave your mind up to what type of human being he is inside and off camera. Charles? Um, yeah, it just seems like the whole thing is, is completely hollow and house of cards. Yeah. And at any second, it could all come crashing down. Yeah. Well, it's the, it's the report, isn't it? It's the money report. Just go to the money. What's they, been going always, on? Always follow the and he will money, fight yeah. to the death. You know when they say corn and animal? Uh, corn and animal. Yeah. When that's his big thing. Forget the presidency. That's the money shot there. What's he willing to do to protect that? Yeah, because um, that's, that's the family and that's his yeah, kids that's the as thing. well. And, you know. um, so that's it. So Karim's got to run off to go to a, 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 a Turkish wedding. And um, <laughs> all right, so that was the Trump podcast. That went pretty well. That weren't too bad. No, uh, no, I'm sure. We'll but you got high standards because you're a proper producer. So you, what? You... <laughs> yeah, I thought it was right. I thought it was good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was our usual rambling way. But there was, you but definitely like learned it. stuff there. Like yeah. if you didn't know about it, you know about it now. And yeah. that's the stuff we know about. All yeah. that sort of stuff. Um, so that's the podcast, and uh, yeah, it went well. Yes. See adios. you later on. Bye bye. Peace Bye-bye. out. I can't believe.